Yeah, we've got the heavyweights here, Chris, on the list. So uh, we've got some of the biggest movers the last two years for, uh, on the uh, on the AFC 100. But there are certain things that we do see over and over again in sort of setup. So um, those are going to be the, the imp- most important lessons. We're pretty excited about this. We've got the ASX model book. Gary and I have both learned a lot in doing the research and preparation for this. And hopefully you can learn a lot from it as well. We know that over the last 100 years or so, best momentum traders in the world, gone back and studied the previous market winners, the market leaders, those that have had the best performances. And they've studied the charts from a technical analysis perspective, also with a bit of fundamental overlay, to see if there are clues that can help identify the next market leaders and help us as traders today set up the trades, our next trades, and hopefully get these tailwind trades with massive monster stock returns. We're consistently servicing the best companies on the ASX with the 30-30 list each week. That's something we share and Gary gets every week. Members get at the same time as Gary does and can join in the conversation. Things that we're looking like, the market leaders, the setups and lessons like we've got today. So you can click on the link below. You can click there to join and get the list at the same time. What we're going to do is jump over and find out from Gary. Look, we've got these five leading companies. What sort of lessons have you pulled out of analyzing these companies and when you take a deep dive what is it that you're finding from these leaders of 22 to 24 you know we've got the heavyweights here chris on the list so uh we've got some of the biggest leaders the last two years for uh, on the uh on the af 1600 so a lot of people will say we don't get you know many um you know fast moving or big moving stocks here well uh we got we got five of the biggest here for the last couple of years so it'll be uh yeah some good lessons in there so you know, we, we are trying to try to we're trying to learn what you know what they what they look like. Um, so you know, if we do get you know looking for sort of common some sort of commonalities, some sort of common characteristics, um, and to see how they're set up there. So if we start to see the same thing starting to develop early in other stocks, um, we potentially you know can get excited about what we see. So we did. There are certain things that we do see over and over again in sort of setup. So. Um, those are going to be the, the imp- most important lessons. Okay. So we're going to look for repeat offenders or repeat setups and things that we can really learn from. So in these market leaders, we're going to start off with CU6. So Clarity Pharmaceuticals, we'll get that chart up on screen. And we know that, as you mentioned, we have seen smaller companies in the ASX become larger and mid-cap ones and become stronger than the best performers. They're an Australian biopharmaceutical company and they excel in what's they have is creating radio pharmaceutical products for therapy and diagnostic imaging. They have something called SAR technology, which is specific antigen receptor, and that enables precise targeting and delivery of radio pharmaceuticals, particularly for cancer and cardiovascular diseases. So the only consumers end up being patients with cancer, but it's obviously coming through doctors and getting the uptake of doctors using this for their treatment. We do know that they had stolen the aspect with global collaborators and their progress is marked by clinical trials and strategic partnerships. The most key one was with AstraZeneca. So before we get into the specifics of the technicals, we're just going to look at the stars on the chart. They're where the key announcements really came from. There's a little plus in May 2024 around that area where they've had a capital raising. But as you can see, they announced that and then quickly have a positive announcement and that's really where they kicked off. So we can, we've can we got to have these little stars in the back of our mind, knowing that the company did announce at the same time. So there's a fundamental change or a structural change, something that's happened with the company. But enough on the background of the company and sort of the news about what they have had. What is it? Along, so sorry, there's news we should actually say. They have first patient treated with prostate cancer trial. They had trial reaching 50% recruitment, which was another announcement in July 23, this one in the middle of the screen. Then they got the full recruitment target reached for phase two. And then that's where they kicked up again in November. And then February 2024, they had trial results, a share placement in April 24. And then they had more results uh, with the SAR by PMSA results in April 24, July 24, the supply agreement with Terra Power. That's Bill Gates' company. And then also capital raisings in April 24. So that's sort of the flow line and the understanding of the clinical assessments and stages that they're going through. Enough of that. Now I will hand over to the technical side where Gary, you've done a lot of work on these charts. First off, we've got here, so we're looking at 
the second half of 2022, the start of 23 is back bang in the middle of the chart, then going over. So what is it in this period and why is it that you've zoomed in on this section of CU6? Yeah, it's just a sort of starting phase there. But just on that on that last one, that Chris, so interesting sort of fact there is oftentimes we see a stock that has run up a lot. You see, can see capital raising come in. That that can be a bit of a short term negative there. But we saw with uh, CU6, and I can obviously we all know the Drain Shield did exactly the same thing after a bit of a run and then you know, softened off there. But it didn't stop them by from firing up and going a lot higher here. So just because we see it. Um, that raise. Uh, that raise doesn't mean it's all over. So, you know, whereas sometimes we do worry about that occurring here. Um, I guess the question is, what's the cap raise for? Is it for further growth, for further development? Um, potentially, if the cap raise is for the right type of things, then it can, can fuel more growth there. So that's probably the, you know, the one lesson they're looking through, just some of the fundamentals there, apart from obs and use there. Um, and I think the other was with, with <laughs> getting a little jump ahead here, but I think some of the other ones... Um, uh, the other lighting based ones here were sort of were having some pretty good drill findings uh, on each low, you know. So like the the, the, the sock of meander, a little drill, then it, you know, then be good another drilling update, positive one, the sock jump, and then it'll settle back down again, another drilling update, and jump again, build. So um, yeah, certain certain patterns there sort of you know did develop in some of those stronger natives there, but um, yeah. But if you look at if you look at, I mean, I guess what we're trying to identify there is sort of um, some early signs these biggest names and there is some commonality there and that we talked about this having a bit of a blueprint there is that like a lot of the time they were looking for that really sharp move um and usually sort of like yeah what you want to see a bit of a move that goes up you know at least 100 percent, maybe doubles the price um and then go through a bit of a consolidation pullback and then sort of come back here so you see that you know um CU6 has had that, you know, 36 cent low there, you know, basically ran up to 78. So basically doubled in price. Um, There's some pretty, you know, obviously pretty, pretty impulsive, some good volume through there in terms of how it traded to that point. And then it did have a bit of a pullback and sort of contract at our classic VC pieces is what often, so oftentimes we'll either get a, um, like a sideways move like we've seen with LTP recently, or we'll see a, a pullback, a little bit of a wedge, or a VCP like this pattern here for CU6, and then the, the volume dries up, and then usually sort of, there might be sort of some news that sort of um, comes in. The interesting thing about that setup here <laughs> is that the, um, the, the that's October 22, so that's exactly where the low in the market is. So we know that, um, you know, this is the thing about, you know, if you look, when, when markets have pullbacks, uh, we're going to get corrections all the time. We're going to go through, you know, all markets and bear markets there. So when we, you know, when we're sort of seeing, you know, markets sort of coming out of that low, because that October was a midterm year low. So we, you know, follow the four year cycle. We've been following my work for a long time. There. We're talking about that October midterm year being a bit of a magnet for a low. And a lot of, a lot of bull markets come out of that phase there. Um, and we know that from, um, with our studies and relative strength there is that when we do have a bit of a low in the market coming out, it's the stocks that have already been showing relative strength there other than leaders. So that the stocks that go on and have the biggest performance have already showed relative strength coming out. So while the rest of the market's actually gone to a new low in October, the stocks had a rally and then pulled back and it's, and it's sort of held up really well showing relative strength versus the rest of the market. So that's a really important sign. So... Yeah, that's probably the biggest lesson we can we can learn from from all the corrective phases in the past and from all the leaders um, that that have really gone on is that they show relative strength versus the rest of the market. So while the market's showing weakness, it is showing strength. And yeah, you know, interesting tidbit here is that usually within two weeks of a market low, Chris, the, the leaders are are at new highs. So think about that. So when the market's found a low, two weeks after finding a low, the leaders in the market are at new high. So the video was at a new high two weeks after the October low. So it's already, you know, it's, got, it's showed relative strength like this. And within two weeks, just like this, you know, coming out of the low here, it's already at market highs here. So by, by November, this is already basically sort of um, at a new high there. So it's showing relative strength versus the whole market. Um, and it goes up like another, almost basically sort of doubles again. 
and then it goes for a long contraction there. So it showed me all the strength at the key time in the market, had a really impulsive move, pulled back and then gone again. So so this stock's definitely going to be on our radar because it showed that relative strength at the time there. Um, Can I just jump in on all that? You're talking about that relative strength. So we're zooming in right here, October low. That's when the whole market, the US and the Aussie, came to their lows. As Gary said those who followed his work know he was really on that and giving credit. If you pick that low. What you're talking about relative strength is it from this 36 cent low, it came up to a 78 cent high, but then pulled back. Fair enough. But when you're saying relative strength, say it's up 50% from that low into the uh, this higher low in October. Yeah. The rest of the market over that last, what's that, three or four months, that's down 10 or 15%. But the relative strength you're talking about is this company here is up 50% when the rest of the market's down 10 or 15 that's what you're referring to with relative strength, isn't it? It's 100%, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically, I mean, you think about there, the place the market will be trending down until October lows. So this has actually rallied out of June. So um, had a pretty strong move in you know, July, August there. And even pulling back into September, October there, you might say, oh, that's pulled cool back as well at the same time. But while everything else has gone to new lows, this is making a high low. So, that, so that, that's the key, you know. What we want to see is we, we want to be basically buying stocks that are making higher lows um, in October, not buying new lows. And, and the natural inclination, natural sort of, um, our, you know, our, our human you might, you might say, is that we want to buy the deep lows, things that have been sold off the most. Okay. Whereas history tells us that's actually not the, that those are not the best stocks to be buying. You actually want to be buying the strongest stocks, the stocks that are making high lows and have showed strength there. And we're saying you see that you go back and look at the strongest names like this, you know, where you go back, they're at new highs within two weeks of the market running a low here. So it's, it's actually a pretty incredible set. I've made me sort of think about that quite a bit. Um, yeah. So if you know, after the, you know, if you think, if you think the market might have found a low and the market's rallied within two weeks, look through. You know, 52 week highs. 52 week highs after two weeks for a like market low. See who's standing up. That that could be a compelling list that alone. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting. So, but yeah, I guess um, after, after it's already had that run there, then then it goes to a different breather there. That, that's sort of like probably November through to um, June there. So yeah, you've really gone through like seven or eight months there of contraction there. And then the whole thing sort of tightens up there. And we just, we just got to be like, you know, we talk about this today, Chris, because sort of sometimes we don't know if it's going to be two months or one month or or seven or nine months, but we'll go through a contraction phase and then we're just waiting for it to break out of that contraction phase. So breaking what I call a B way for me, um, or breaking out, you know, breaking above the previous sort of swing swing high there. So um, ideally you'd see, you know, that's why VCPs and wedges are really nice because then you're sort of, you know, your you know, your higher lows, you know, you get so yeah. Get, get lower and lower and the whole thing will tighten up. Then you break out of a tight formation there. This is a bit of a square formation there. Obviously, we've had a bit, a bit of a rectangle there. We had two touches on the top, three on the bottom. So we're going to we, we, we essentially have a Davis box there, Chris, as well. Anyway, studied Davis. Um, and then as soon as you break out of that box there, we know we're going to, you know, usually the measured move of the breaking out of the box is the size of that move. So the size of that box, we should move by at least that size, which... Um, would, would give us a, just a technical target anyway, sort of somewhere up around 95 cents probably. Um, but yeah, breaks out of that and then that sort of um, that's, gives us our sort of start there. And then you, you do have the little parents. Uh, after having that run there, the whole thing tightens up there. You do get a little bit of a cup and handle. It's probably not the beautiful sort of cup and handle you'd sort of see, prefer to see at a high, but it does, um, yeah, there is a sort of some symmetry off the, off the lower high here. But probably most important thing is that it does come out impulsively if it goes to a new high. Um, it's it's gone up pretty strongly, some good volume, and then then the whole thing tightens up at BCP, and then we get, you know so we really get an entry coming out of that again, out of the Davis box. We get a little VCP tighten up, we get another entry. So this would have been a good stock to be in long here, just following some basic principles there. And um, yeah, so we're you know, potentially we're sort of set at eighty two here. Maybe we've added another parcel uh, at ninety ninety one, um, and then here yeah, we see what develops. We don't know what's going to follow this. Um, we just um, yeah, 
So that's good setup. We've got three setups there. We've come out of the October low. We've had a long consolidation November through June, which is a pretty long time. But as you say, you're consistently keeping these days on your watch list. We tab through to the next chart. We've then expanded. So just for context, this rectangle on the right-hand side of the chart, again, going to, that stays here, but it's going to show up in this part of the chart on the bottom left-hand side. Entry two, entry three remain the same. So just toggling back once more. Here's entry two and entry three on the right. That's becoming the left under the yellow highlight VCP cup and handle under left-hand side. So we've got entry three, which is that little the VCP triangle you've broken out. And then you've got stock holds a 20-day moving average, which is the green line of these green arrows. That kind of gives us a time stamp of now where we've expanded out to. And this is where things start getting really interesting on this chart. So take us in after entry three, sort of that mid-August 2023 period. What's happening there? And then when does it sort of really uh, ratchet up your interest? Yes, I mean, it obviously comes out of that little tight little pattern there, has a bit of a run, uh, comes back and tests the 20. So oftentimes we sort of know with these momentum names is that, you know, the ones that really get really vertical, they might hug the 10 if they're really um, sharp, but what most of them will probably just hug the 20. That's sort of what sort of history tells us with a, with a lot of them. So comes back here, does sort of touch the 20, and then, then goes to a new high. Um, you know, it's had a, and again, it's, we've had a pretty decent move there. We've got like 67 up to 130. So more than, you know, again, we've sort of doubled in price sort of um, on that move there from the low there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's like a, almost 100% just from the trigger, you know, just waiting patiently for that, you know. So we just waited for it to come outside there. This is why you, you don't need to be, you know, you have this preconceived idea that you have to be sort of buying in the low all the time. You know, you just need to be sort of waiting for the sharp strength. As many Benny says, you know, be in the like at the least amount of time there, but just one when, when it shows that real strength there. But you know, it's had had a pretty good run there, and then it, then it does start to go through a corrective phase. So, you know, breaks below the ten, and then it does break below the twenty. That probably would, you know, that should really have you out of the position there if you're a momentum trader there. You know, the, you know, sort of following those sort of rules there. Um, okay, so that sort of comes into is this a percentage wise? You've come off a hundred a dollar thirty i. And you're coming down a fair bit. Um, it doesn't look as big because the chart's up so much, but we're going from 130 down towards a dollar, a little bit south of a dollar in the lows in this box where you've got entry four. So as a momentum trader, you're out of this trade. But as a student of the market leaders, it's on your yeah. list. It's hang on a second, it's it's already shot, it's gonna consolidate for some time. Are there any clues in that consolidation, or you're really waiting for a setup in that entry number four? Yeah, I mean, we, I guess we, we know from the past there, these, these big movers there, and we had that sort of 100% rallies and stuff, that moves there. That's, those, uh, those do give you, you know, they're, they're the stocks and sort of showing that clear sort of relative strength and clear sort of leadership there. And we know that we'll go through a bit of a pause. So we, we can go through either a sideways sort of um, time consuming correction, or we might get like a little ABC um, pullback there. So you're looking for that classic A leg down. B wave, then it's C leg down, and then sort of start to build there. So, the most interesting aspect of that corrective um, pattern there, Chris, is the volume. So, if you look at the volume through that whole period there, it's you know it's really really light. So, got our little um, toolbar on the way there, but I can tell you that that whole period there, the volume is very really light, and it got lighter towards the end as well. So, it got really really light, um, and then we do sort of you know eventually sort of break above a little swing high there come out of that little downward channel and then we start to build again. That that probably gives us another entry out of that little consolidation there. So we know this has been a previous leader, so um, showed relative strength versus the market. Um, just had a bit of a pause here. Um, very light volume, so not, not, no aggressive selling throughout the whole period. So you know, it's still in pretty good shape. So again, we get another entry here um, and yeah, we just we see what this brings. We, we just never know what it's going to bring. And again, you'd probably be trailing the because in the past, see, now you've sort of got some precedent on the stock. So we know we, the last um, time there, it basically held the 20. So we probably should be running the 20 um, initially there as our probably stop there. And then, you know, if it does, starts to get really ultra aggressive, then we could move up to the 10 or something in between there. But that's, that's sort of what we're doing. I mean, we can see here that this thing just does not come anywhere near the 20 for quite a while. It actually ends up hugging the 10. Most of the time, it starts to get really aggressive there. 
And then yeah, so it's just, just yeah. on these arrows here, you've got entry four. Is that because you've broken a swing high, the B wave, you've had that consolidation, that rectangle, you pushed through it? Is that your entry on entry four? Yeah, so coming coming out with coming out the top there, you have another entry. I mean, you have a few consolidations there where it goes sideways a few weeks and breaks out, goes sideways again and breaks out. Um, goes another sideways consolidation, goes another sideways consolidation. This is a thing you you see that um, you know what you're seeing is a stock punching up really quickly, and then going sideways for a time. And you'll sort of a drill in there for all those periods there. You'll you'll see that I've sort of highlighted some proximal uh, volume bars. All the volume bars were all the stocks. You know, the impulsive move going up here. So this is where the volume, you know, stocks punching up aggressively and then it goes sideways and the volume dries up. So I mean, Spartan is a classic, you know, if you look at, look at Spartan there, you know, it was go up a big volume, go sideways for very light volume, go up a big volume, sideways light volume. So that's what you want to see. You want to see when the, when the stock's running up, everyone's enthusiastic, the volume's pretty robust. And then it goes sideways, the volume dries up. You just don't see the selling there. So, that was the, the, probably the most thing there. It's probably not the ideal correction, that September through to November, but we did not see much selling in there. It was really light-based sort of um, volume through there. And we know that this, you know, they're leading names. They've got to go through a pause. They've got to go through, you know, really, that's only two months. So after having a 100% rally off the trigger, um, it's gone through a two-month consolidation, which is nothing, and then, and then it regimes again. That's why we've sort of got to keep an eye on these stocks that have been, the stocks that have rallied 100%, and then go through a bit of a consolidation and pause. We've got to, got to keep those stops on our radar there because we sort of know that they're, they've been the prior leaders they can, they can lead again. Uh, this is exactly what it does. And then it just doesn't show much weakness at all. So, I mean, you could have just programmed in the 20 here, let this thing run in. It would have been, what, until February there that we started to get a few intraday uh, tests of the, of the 20. Um, starting to see a bit more volatility maybe up around that top there. So that would probably have you a little bit um, concern there, and you might have got you might have got stopped out there around what you know. Look, you could have got stopped out maybe two fifty if you run really tight there. If you're a little bit, if you're end of day sort of guy, you might have been getting out at what two seventy here, probably a Marchish client. So but that that you know, you've had a great move. You know, again, it's gone up. What are we? You know, we've entered there what just above a dollar, and it's gone to you know what two eighty, it's like two seventy. So we're up, you know. <laughs> Well, Good trade already. Solid trade. 150 per side. Yeah. So we've done pretty well again, you know. So following that sort of leading name here. So, so again, and like now we just sort of see what happens to the stock here. It's had a cracking run. Well, you know, we know that the stocks that have these big moves, I'll go through consolidation phase. You know? So again, okay, we, we don't take it off the radar. We just put it in the, you know, it goes into the, into the, watch uh, yeah, the watch list and just in the hold list there. And we sort of think, okay. They should have at least, you know, last last consolidation was pretty short, two months. It probably should have a bit longer than that. So probably, you know, if I'm looking at this here now, I'm probably thinking this should go through probably at least a, a two to five months consolidation before it goes again. You know, it should that's had a cracking move, so it should go through a bit of a consolidation. And hopefully it'll tighten up. Maybe it'll give us a VCP. You don't know. Um, and, um, yeah, we'll see see what happens. Okay, so this is the consolidation box here. You've got entry point eight just for the markers. Yeah. We're going to go through to the next chart. Yeah. Your entry point eight, well, it's about two thirds from left to right. So this is the May 2024 period, and the chart goes to yeah. August 24. So we kind of zoom in. This is the 52 week high. You've got entry point eight below the high. So is this the B wave break that you're talking about before, which is the swing high being broken? Is it because there's a change of character with a jump up? Is there a big volume? What's been the cue for this entry point eight? Yeah, so I mean, if you, if you look through that, I mean, if you go back a chart there, Chris, there, you'll see that obviously it did spike to a new high and then it had a little A, B, C correction. Okay. So this is, again, we, again just some of the basics around Elliott Way say that, you know, the most common correction is to see a little three-wave correction, and that possibly that can be it. Our our, tr our trend can resume, but again, we, we wouldn't want to buy that just because it had a three-wave correction. We'd want to sort of see at least a B-wave break. Okay, so yeah, we we might have played this here. We might have been we've made what 100% on the first leg, maybe 150% on the second leg. We've probably got a little bit of uh, grace on this stock here. It's been pretty kind to us. 
So maybe we see this, uh, even though it's had a pretty good move, we're looking pretty extended. So maybe we'll just take a half position if we be, if we break a B wave here. So as soon as we break a little bit of a high there, so we do break a little bit of B wave on that chart there, but it, what, what's probably most interesting there is it actually happens on pretty big volume. So we thought, oh, maybe let's let's basically put a half weight on. If it, if it takes a higher, I probably should add a full position on. You know what I mean? So let's you know give, give it a let's see what happens here. But that volume does gap up there, goes through the little lower high there, and then yeah, and the thing doesn't look bad. I mean, this, this is a volume this thing is is here, which is the start of the move, but it just keeps going. That volume maintains huge levels. Yeah. And then goes from three to almost four dollars on that high volume. Yeah. So, so this, this is the most aggressive it's the most aggressive volume of the whole move. So this is I mean, it's actually not showing, you know, this might be extended here, might be up, you know, hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty percent from initial entry there. I mean, everyone's probably thinking, Oh, this is got to run too far, run too far, but we know these leaders can keep running. And what happens there, the volume shows its hand there. It doesn't it doesn't say this is doesn't show weakness, it shows strength, it shows even a higher conviction. That's like that's more aggressive there. I mean that's in the Elliott wave terms there, that's like wave three type of volume, you know. So you had your first leg up, pull back, and then you have, you know, what they say, your wave three your your biggest wave, that's when you see the volume come in here. So, you know, when you see this coming through there, you think, shit, this could be this could be wave three. This could be the, you know, this could be the biggest wave here. The volume is already way bigger than, than previous in the first leg. So, um, yeah, and this breaks through. We should be basically at on. We're at 52 week high. Um, and this thing just keeps, just goes straight up. It goes up really aggressively. It has a few little pauses. Um, and again, if we just use the 20 day, which obviously we, we knew the 20 day was pretty reliable the last couple of times. Um, the last time I actually hung the 10 there. So, you might have been thinking, oh, maybe I should hug the ten because the last the last time I actually stayed initially pretty aggressively on the ten here. Look, if we followed the ten there, we would have you know taken us all the way up to around about five uh, five twenty five before we got across of that. So you know, getting an entry around just uh, just around three dollars here, or maybe a little bit on it two radius on there. Uh, it's taken us, you know, ha hasn't crossed the ten, hasn't. Hasn't close below the ten until it gets around five twenty five. So again, that's that's another cracking, you know. You're looking at what seventy, eighty percent move here again, Chris. Pretty quick time too, I and mean, that's a that's a fast move. So what are you in the trade there for maybe about four weeks or literally a month? The stock's up seventy, eighty percent. So um again, pretty pretty impulsive, pretty pretty quick move. And then yeah. Um crosses your five, you probably, you know, Maybe you sell half on your on your ten, maybe the other half at the at the twenty, because you know you had a good ride here. You you know you should be sort of staggering. You know, I think I like to sort of stagger my stops out in the same place just in case it knocks me out a little bit, then I get out of the whole lot. So the beauty of actually staggering your stops at maybe different layers, different levels, is that if it does just sort of pierce the ten and keep going, maybe you, you, you know it only takes out some of your trade when we only takes out half your position. Um, but yeah, I mean, should be well and truly out again when it crosses the twenty. Um, and then are you re-entering? You've got cup and handle VCP there. Yeah. Would you so be at re-entry on this? So the, so the whole thing pulls back. It it it, uh, it rebounds back to the high again. Does a little three wave correction here under the high. Does the you know? It's almost like that David Ryan sort of tight action under the high. It's like, geez, this is still not you know. So I'd be looking at the volume there. The, the volume's a little bit more. Elevated, there was a bit more selling on that way down, but that's that's on the back of volume being a lot more aggressive on the way up as well. So we, like the volume has been, you've got to look it's at it. Actually, it's yeah, exactly. So yeah, you know, compared to the volume that on the way up here, still not showing too much there. Did see a bit of a spike at that low too. So we saw volume come in after it sold off, and then then it's gone straight back to the high really quickly. Like what is that? One, two, three, four, five weeks. We're back at the high again. So like, dude, this is not showing weakness here and it tightens up here and then breaks through i mean you could potentially have bought that break here um which would have been around about what 550 and then again we just whether we hug our use the 10 or the 20 so we might have had maybe half a 10 because we know stop when it goes it's hung the 10 the last few times so maybe we put half our stop in at the 10 and half at the 20 there so 
the 10 might have had us out, you know, somewhere around the 620 or something there. And maybe the uh, the 20 has us out at, um, you know, somewhere around $6. So wouldn't, wouldn't have been the best trade of the lot, but hey, if you're up, you know, 100 and 150 and then another 70, you're probably thinking, oh, I'm, 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 I'm happy to give away a little bit. In the end, you don't give anything away. You just don't have the cracking last trade here but um yeah it's um yeah i mean exactly. that's good you gotta think too that that is um this is uh august there chris so i can tell you that um pretty pretty sure that c6 today um is at a, a c6 today is he's at an all-time high <laughs> so yeah so it's, it's continuous, you know, still still showing strength there. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, well, that's definitely a lead up. It's been a huge, a stellar run. We've seen a few entries in there along the way. It's a good example of where you've got the blue line and the green line, the moving averages, of how it hugs it, how you can monitor a stop. And then the explosive move up and the consolidation sideways. We're going to look for that in the other charts. The next one that we're going to bring up, I'll put the chart, chart on screen while I have a good talk about the announcements that it's shared through if i can get that shot here we go drone shield lovely so putting this on the screen once again the plus indicates a capital raise the star indicates news quite a secretive california in the sense that when you understand what it does you can see why some of the news is not as out there as other companies because they specialize in protecting people and places from risks posed by drones so they develop technology that detect, track, and stop drones from causing harm. Now, think about what those situations are. They're working with governments, military, businesses, event organizers, and that's to keep personnel and assets safe. So their technology, Drone Shield, that helps protect airports, stadiums, prisons, vehicles, and other sensitive areas from drone threats. You can read between the lines they are used in wars. The company operates in that industry is consistently fast changing. We know from the start of the uh, Russian Iraq situation that's happened there, the use of drones has increased significantly and prolific use also reflects in the chart that we've got here. So the news, there aren't too many news stamps on it. In December 2023, which we've got down towards the bottom of the chart, that's the first star. We can see that the Drone Sentry C2 Tactical, which is a portable command and control system for counter drone operation, operations, they announced that, and that's used for real-time situation awareness and response. Now, there's a lot of, at the time, increasing demand for anti-drone technology following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which is February 2022. So it's been going for some time, but this is where they've really signed on. And then April 24 is where we can get sort of an announcement as a $25 billion contract with NATO. So their procurement framework agreement was announced, and they're after the Drone Century C2 which is that equipment announced in December, and they've got an order in for it. A couple of months later, we've got May 24. The US government have a contract for $35 million, and that's the Drone Gun Mark II, which is a handheld counter-drone device, and the Drone Century X, similar to the one we've talked about before. This one's their automated detection and neutralization system. So this is used to enhance their counter-drone capabilities. we got some capital raisings in Feb 23, $10.9 million, in Feb 26. Uh, February 6, 23, and there was also a share purchase plan. And then in April 24, we've got the second plus. That's 25 billion capital raise, fully underwritten placement, showing support from possibly institutional investors and large bonds. Now we've got the context of what's happening in the company, the announcements. They're a lot thinner in the announcements than many of the other companies that we've seen, but it's all over the headlines of where it's being used. So to that point, there's a the context of what the move is. Gary, can you walk us through how you see the trade being set up and what stands out to you at each point. Yeah, so again, you know, so sometimes we just see a stock run up quite a lot. Then you see the sort of cap raising there and you sort of like can get a bit nervous about it. But I have seen a few times there lately that sometimes those cap raisings there, um, it sounds funny here, but the bigger the raising. Um, the better it is. Yeah, yeah, because all of a sudden also, it, well, it's shown that they can actually now, because before they're trying to raise $2 million or Three million or five million or eight million. It's you know it's the tough ride right? because you sort of got nothing to still stand by. But then all of a sudden the stock's you know flying a little bit here, and then all of a sudden you know, you're always worried about cap raising. But you know if they raise like say three or five million, you know 
all the stuff. Alex, that going to see them through. What's yeah, the burn rate? Where is this? Is Forty million. Thirty like, million. Like, doing something. Yeah, shit. Okay, this is sort of like people want a piece of this. Um, they're pretty confident they can raise that much. Obviously, yeah, maybe this thing goes. So that's why sometimes you know, um, just, just maybe think of a stock that I'm actually in that uh, sort of caught me a little bit with a raise. I'm saying actually because they did a raise only earlier that another big raise. I thought. Be surprised I couldn't get it away previously, but now I could. So it usually means that I know there's good stuff coming. So that's why they, so they raise that, you know. Yeah. That raise is after the NATO contract was announced. So they've yeah. said, okay, this is third party endorsement. We're actually being deployed in the NATO forces. This is real world testing. So I guess to that point, you're saying that the raises might not necessarily be a bad thing. You're just going to look between the first layer of the headline. So if we look at December 22, which is sort of just at the cusp where you see the share price taking up, we're on the far left-hand side of the chart. And then you've got a VCP and you're saying drone shows a relative strength with 170% rally on strong trading volumes. The context once more, October 22 lows, that's on the far left-hand side. On the chart, you've got 15 and a half cents. So maybe not the best relative strength comparison, but as the market has come out and started rallying, You've seen 170% return here. I guess what we're learning from you is that that rally, that sort of move, it's not too late. This is adding it to your watch list, is it? Yes, I guess it's probably not showing relative strength at the low. It's like everything else that's um, that's come out of the, the market low in 22. But this would, you know, within uh, you know four 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 months of the low, this 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 stock's come out of the gates firing. So it's literally. Yeah, you know, from fifteen to what forty two there, hundred and seventy percent rally. So I imagine that this would have been in the top ten or twenty stocks in terms of performance for the first four months coming out of that um of that market low. So that should have been telling you, oh, this stock's showing again relative strength. So it's rallied more than other other things. Um and pretty impulsive. And we I mean no looking at the you know, if we go back and look at all those biggest winners historically, like they all come with a they all start with a three-figure rally. So we're looking for that sort of 100% rally. I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's, that's to me, that's the textbook. I've, that's the one thing I've sort of learned here now is I'm looking for that stock that's already rallied 100%. That's crazy to be saying that because it's sort of like stocks already doubled in value. Most people, most people take it off their radar because they feel like they've missed it. But that's often usually the start here. So after having a, pre- and you can see there too, look at the volume and this thing hadn't traded much at all. And then coming out of that rally there, uh, that had the December there, you know, a little, little VCP in the middle there. But that, that has come in with some pretty good volume there. So not only is it rallied at 170%, but all of a sudden we've seen really strong participation in that rally. So that's a good sign there. And then thing goes through a correction there. And you see that correction there comes back as a fairly decent move there. So it comes back sort of um, almost sort of half of the rally. It sort of say goes from what, 42 cents back to sort of about 21 here. So literally half, you know, so. Sort of, yeah, you know, from a technical point of view, we look at fifty percent corrections, but we had a fifty percent correction of price here. But the one thing we can see with that with the last month or two of that decline is there's no volume in there. So the volume is pretty light on that decline. So there's no sort of super aggressive volume, even though it's sort of half the price here. And then the thing has another little spike again. Um so the volume comes in, you go, well, it's interesting. And then then it starts to go through a correction phase again and the whole thing tightens up. And again, not seeing any any real volume through that corrective process there, so I think okay, this is pretty constructive. There, it's when it when it goes, it's going up fast. When it pulls back, it's it's very corrective and then impulsive corrective. So that's what we want to see from our stocks. We want to see them move up really fast and really easy, and then when they go down, we want to see it be it you know struggle, use up a lot of time, um, people are, you know not getting involved in the sell down. So eventually, it sort of has a bit of a rally. Pulls back, tightens up, another rally, stays under the high, and it eventually breaks through, gives us a little BCP. So it's probably the first trigger there is, you know, literally like a year after the first time to rally. So we're looking around um, November um, of 23 there. We'll be giving us an entry there somewhere around about 30 cents. So even if we've just been watching this for a year, you know, this is almost like a stealth. You know, we're we're like the we're like the sniper there. He's basically sitting there for you know two or three weeks, uh, hasn't moved, just waiting for the you know the kill shot. So there's our kill shot right there. 
we, we come out of that consolidation. Jordy showed all the right characteristics so far. We're just waiting for it a little, waiting for it to tighten up, uh, and we're waiting for it to break above the B B wave, um, and we come out of here. And then we have a little bit of a rally. Um, we go through a little bit of a three wave correction there. Um, I think it sort of still um, goes to a bit of a sideways correction there. I think it does does break the ten and twenty. So, but it hasn't been a really super aggressive move here yet. We'll probably, you know, we don't know which which. Which maybe average is going to really work for us yet? Or we're still know. talking about December twenty three year, aren't we? In this second rectangle on the right hand side. Yeah. So the same. It's always done is come back a little ABC, um, come back a little little undercut. So let's say it's you know showed a little bit of relative strength there, done a little undercut maybe, um, little false break, but then it goes back up again. But what it does here is that this is a bit of a sideways orientation there, just underneath the old high. So that is a sort of possible sort of um, cup and handle set up there and then it does break up and then after that it actually probably sets up a proper cup and handle because it really does go back up to the old high and then it does a little sideways shimmy like a little abc again like a little three wave pull back there stays nice and tight in there um and, and then it goes in there the, the thing about that little um probably the second handle there chris is that there's no volume on the on the handle so again, that's probably probably a better handle because it's really it's it's run pretty good volume there. And you can see there, the last um, three or four days, I think of that of that handle, there's just no volume at all, no selling in there. Even though it sort of pulls back, it looks like it might roll off here. But then the whole thing tightens up, and then it breaks through again. So it breaks through our handle. It has a little bit of a um, a throwback, which we know happens, you know, because a lot of people are looking at these sort of cup and handles, so. It break, breaks the sort of handle, has a little throwback. It breaks the handle again, has another little throwback. And then, and then it breaks above again. So you could have been possibly just adding on each little break and maybe just running and stop under the last sort of swing low there. And then it breaks again, you know, you're still sitting back below. And then you know, once it breaks through the 52-week high again, um, taking that sort of high out, which is... Definitely takes takes out our old forty two cent high as well. That's the better signal. Because now we've sort of gone to a new high. And this is the thing about the leaders too, is that oftentimes if you just waited for the fifty two week high to be broken and then buy then, that that's that's often sort of good enough as well. So rather than try and get the V C P or the the low cheat or the cheat or the high cheat, whatever whatever they refer to it as, um, even just waiting for the fifty two week high. Um, that can be a really good signal as well. And then we've, we've started to see, we've seen volume in the first legs, volume on the second leg. Um, we've seen really, you know, contraction on, on all the pullbacks. And then we started to see a bit of volume on that. Once we broke out of that little first little handle, we saw some volume come in, so that's a really good sign. Then we go sideways and then volume up, then go sideways, volume, you know, go up again, volume, go sideways again. So we're seeing all the right type of things there, price-wise, and then eventually you crack through the 52-week high. We should be buying now. So even if you're buying at 44, 45 cents a bit late, that's still a good good breakout there. And we're seeing all the right characteristics there so far to actually buy that 52-week high. And I'm going to quote you on this one before. It won't be a direct quote, but I remember in the last couple of weeks, you were saying you were happy to pay the highest price you've ever been paid for a company. And you did it three consecutive trades. So you, uh, if, if we're looking at this fifty-two week high entry, yeah. you're saying it can be quite hard, but it, for a setup like this, it can actually be less risk than trying to pick the bottom in between the churn and hold it for a much longer trade, can't it? You've got if you've got a, like a nice risk reward, reward ratio on a setup, it can actually be less risk to be entering at the highest price possible. Yeah, yeah, it's funny actually. I think I've actually bought. Bought that same share fourth time at a new high, so I've, I've even bought it again at a new high. So, uh, but that's the thing about these stocks. They the ones that are leading here, are showing strength there. They, they continue to keep moving up here. So, um, yeah. So don't you know? Don't be discouraged. There, sort of like it's uh, yeah. Um, look, you can, you can get throwbacks, you can get failures and false false breaks, but the, the ones that are you know set up the right way. Um, do. It's, it's probably the ones that are more dull, low volume, maybe have been going sideways for many years. Those are the probably the false breaks you don't want to buy. Yeah. <laughs> but you want to see that really impulsive, aggressive, 100% move, 
you know, we had a back pressing volume again, you know. So you're seeing that, you know, I think that's it's, it's, there's a little bit of Wyckoff in that too, Chris, obviously looking at how stocks move, how quickly they move, and uh, how much volume comes in as well, the right sort of profile. So if you haven't sort of studied a little bit of Wyckoff, I'd suggest looking at that because some really good sort of um, lessons in that Wyckoff theory. Um, I think Anna cooling has got a good book on the volume analysis as well, which is quite quite good. Um, I think, what's it? Uh, is it David Weiss. David Weiss. Yeah. Trades about to happen. Love that. Book. Trades about to happen, yeah. That, and that, there, yeah, you could... You can spend half an hour reading one page. Yeah, I yeah, it, I think yeah. the two of us talked yeah. about it. Took us a, yeah. it's the longest book it took me to read ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm studying by basically studying a studying a chart, and it's basically <laughs> got, there like ten points on the chart there. Every volume bar in analysis there, like it's a d- different, it's volume at a different level, but it, it is quite it, it's quite interesting. It's sort of you know, it's, it's, you're learning all the characteristics you want to see from winners, so. Uh, I reread that Springs chapter probably about 10 times. That's a yeah. uh, lot. But we're on uh, Drone Shield. We're talking about VCPs. We're talking about buying 52 week highs. You've yeah. seen it break out from the mid 40, low 40s, and then progress up. You've got a VCP on the far right hand side of the chart. Yeah. I can tell from the other notations that you've got there, we've got another chart coming. So yeah, so we know it's hell. Yeah, so we know obviously with these, with these leading names, the Mependic uh, names when they get really strong. So we're, we're either looking, so once we get our trigger there, we should be using either the 10 or the 20 day moving average as our as our stop. So if we want to give ourselves a bit of room, we we we, um, we start with a 20th. That's generally where I sort of start pretty much most of my stops. And then if the thing starts to get really vertical, then I might um, tighten up to the 10. And then me personally, I like to have some of my stops at different levels. So I don't, just in case I get, whipped out things that you know sometimes you whip out things like that. so um so i might put half at the 10 maybe half at the 20 and then um you know if i haven't sort of sold into heat which is the other strategy too if i get a three and a five day really aggressive move i'll probably sell a quarter or half of my trade if i can get if i get myself to maximum um say 20 percent holding in the stock which is what i try and build into then I'll try and sell like other, you know, something like if I have a really big move, like day three or day five, big jump, I'll try and sell a quarter or a half out of that heat. Then I'll try and backstop the rest into break even. And then I'll try and use the five or t- I'll sorry, the 10 or the 20 to, um, you know, just because just I was a, tr- yeah, just trying to stay with some of those trades a bit longer. So, you know, Minute Vandy, I think those guys, even Calaghi, they're all sort of selling some into heat. So taking, taking the heat out of the trade by banking some profits um, and then letting the rest um, sort of ride there. So, because if you banked sort of like a 15% profit and then you've got the, on half of the trade and then then you've got the rest that's sitting at break even, like you're going home with, you know, 7.5% gain on the whole lot or 15 on a half and then hopefully you keep trailing it there and it you know, keeps going home. You just don't know what's going to come with those trades. So you don't know if it's going to go up another 5%. Or if it's going to go up another fifty percent, or if it could go up another hundred percent. We're seeing that these moves there, particularly trade momentum names, they can keep going pretty large here. So we never know what we're going to get, but if we let some take some let it ride off the top, let some ride there and just follow it there. Yeah. But we see here this thing, we know our fastest names will hold the ten. So this thing is going up crazy. So we know we should be probably looking. Just follow the ten pretty closely. When you see there, it just hugs the ten. Even at the end there, it starts to tighten up, but it tightens up under the under the ten. So it literally sits on the ten, does a little BCP, and then it pops through again. So you might have a little little trade there, but then I think it does a little bit of a um, it pops, then it sort of consolidates, and then it pops again. So you just you don't know. So yeah. So you've got the VCP that's hugged it on the ten day moving average, set above it. You possibly have the position ad, which you've got the far top right of the chart. This one's explosive. Maybe you've sold into heat. Maybe you haven't. Maybe it stopped you out because it breaches the 10 and the 20. We move on to the next chart because we're going to see this same VCP and this explosive move. We're around 75, 80 cents. We remember that as we come into this next chart. 75, 80 cents. Let's drag this 80 cent mark all the way back over. Here we are. So this is the Feb 24 period. Just toggling back to the last chart, we're in Feb, March here. So different scale, but what we're seeing here is to the 
a third in from the left. We've got that BCP, the possible addition. We see it throw up. Maybe you sold into heat into late February. It dips down into March. And then we're back into this chart where we've got this sideways consolidation or this sideways move. Still volatile. Still now um, you've got the green arrows coming down here. This force set up here, this VCP about smack bang in the middle of the chart. What are you looking at here in this fourth VCP as it's coming through the second half of March into April? How's this setting up for you? Yeah, we've seen those you know, little consolidations and then pop through there. So you could add a few little possible ads in there, maybe some shorter term trades there. But we see that you know, these stronger sort of stocks um, end up hugging the 10 and then that eventually breaks. I think that breaks the 10 there uh, end of February. Um, then goes for a consolidation there. And then you're, look, you're looking and waiting again. You're waiting for another consolidation, like a lot of VCP or a sideways congestion or a little B wave break. Is, you know, again, we're just looking at the leading names. We're looking at what the pros do. This is what they do. They wait for either a little consolidation. And they wait for it to... Um, so we don't know if it's going to be one month, two months or five months, whatever it is. But this comes out of a VCP there within a month of the last high, and it's and it's breaking out again. So we, we, we don't know what it's going to bring. We'll see that it runs up again, hugs the 10, it gets a bit vertical. You know, I personally think if you're in there again, and then you're sort of, whether it's day three or five, or you know, if it starts getting vertical like that, you should be taking a little bit off. So even if it's just, you know, you know if, you, if you're like me, sort of try and build a position there, you can sort of try to scale out there. So if I saw something like that, big day vertical there, probably, you know, if I take off, you know, a quarter or so, you know, just sell a quarter. You got to, you got to, you do have to sort of sell some into the heat here. You know, that's the thing. Um, and they get a bit nasty there. So you, oftentimes, you know, these things will you know, sort of set up here. And if worst case scenario, you're sort of like a, you know, Spartan, which has been coming strong there. They just had breathers. So you just wait, you know, even if you say, just say you got down to, say you had 20 and then you sold 15% of the 20, if they go down to say, you know, Five percent holding there, that oh, geez, I wish I'd got the hell onto more. Just wait for the next tight consolidation and then break out and add that five back on, and then you're back in again. Well, you are, you, you've done it in the correct manner, tight, you know, good risk management. And then, you know, so you see here with this one, we just we just end up having a few little pullbacks and a few consolidations, and we get multiple entries there, places to come back in here. So that's the beauty of these high momentum stocks is they do you know, run up and pop, but then they sort of consolidate, and then they run up and pop, and then they consolidate. So, um, yeah, look, you know, I, mean, I, I remember looking at Afterpay, Chris, and I worked out you know, if you you bought at the very low, sold at the very top, you nailed the yeah, the top and bottom, what, what that amount was, um, as opposed to sort of waiting for a little B-wave break and just trading that and using a trailing and average there. Would have gave you, you know, would have gave you like four or five really good entries. You would have made more trading each entry than and, and if you, not that they're just sitting through the whole move and, and nailing the daily just because it you, you know you're able to sort of scale up and build a position um, and then you're taking up into heat and then you're waiting for it to consolidate again. Oftentimes you're getting a better entry again, um, tightens up and then you get another pop and then. You're selling the heat again, and then it consolidates there. So you're taking out two, five, ten, twenty dollar moves, and then multiply that. Um, I mean, not, not even sort of scaling up there, or not even compounding it. Yeah, you, st you can still do better than actually sitting through the whole move here. So that's why I think you know some of these sort of what Minervini does and O'Neill and yeah, David Ryan, all these sort of you know great traders there. It's you know, it's it's timeless there. There's there's a principle that's been around here. So um yeah, we just gotta just gotta learn here. It's just the thing is you don't know what you're gonna get. So we just that's why you gotta create that sort of rule process and a setup and then just wait from there and yeah. But history is sort of show that, you know, like the using the five and ten, sorry, using the ten and twenty. I don't know why I keep saying that, but uh, the ten and the twenty uh is, you know, is a good sort of place to sort of um to see there, because even if you say sold sold half into each of those heat, and then you got stopped out and break even on the other one, you still make pretty good money. And then you got a, you got set again, and then you sold it half into heat, and it pulled back and stopped out a break even on that. Did it again, sold it in the heat, make it you know. So even if it keeps sort of coming to that, you're still making, you're progressing each time there. And then one of those times, 
you sell half in the heat and the, and the other half just goes whoosh up, bang, and you go, oh, there it, and it that, is. You know, that so. might be this sick setup, the small V, <laughs> the last one you've got there. We're coming into the end of May. It's breaking the B wave, which is at the top of that rectangle, which is the sixth setup, the small VCP. You're entering on that B wave break. You've got a volume signature at the bottom of the chart just towards the end of May. That's the B wave break. You're adding to that position. I'm assuming four or five days, you're selling into heat, which it still goes up for another two days, has a bit of a pullback for a day or two, sitting above the 10 day moving average, which is the blue line. What happens from there, Gary? We're at sort of a dollar thirty at this point. What happens because there's another hundred percent away? Yeah, because I'm sort of. Sh- if you look down the bottom there, Chris, I'm also showing some of the volume on the spikes as well. So we're seeing, so we're seeing that basically impulsive jump, you know, to a new high there on big volume, and then consolidate, and a big jump again out of the range, big volume, and consolidation, big volume, big jump, big volume again. So. The pro, the pro, the volume profile is is telling us this wants to go up. This wants to go. It's it's you know it's enjoying going up. But yeah, it's going you know. So and then it's one well, of the pullbacks there. The volume's a lot. The volume's a lot again. So um, yeah. So I mean, eventually this sort of runs there. I mean, it's 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 no mistake here um, that those principles there about taking some of the heat, you know, trailing the rest there. Um, you know, that a lot of people use you know, a lot of the best traders use those principles because they don't know which which one is going to work out. So you are going to get you know you get bank you do a little bit of banking, and and then sometimes you're going to get stopped out of break even. Other times you're going to get a little bit of banking. You know, you get stopped out of the small gain, and then other times you get a little bit. Of, what, what, the last one here, you do a little bit of banking. Say you get you know maybe three or five days up. You might be that you know. You might have come out of that bought the first break there, had a big, big close by the end of the day. You might have topped up, thought, oh, this looks pretty good. It's got one, two, three, maybe, you know, an extra three or four days up, looking a little bit um, vertical at that stage. You go, look, I might just take a quarter or half off. Um, then goes up a couple more days, pulls back, and you know, just tags the 10. Maybe you, you're smart enough to put an order in near the 10. Maybe top up if you're being a little active. Um, but then the thing just climbs there, it ends up breaking below the the ten, but it, it doesn't break below the twenty, and then goes straight up to a new high there. So again, if you maybe put half in at ten, half in at twenty, you might have got knocked out a half on ten. But you know, to be honest, with you, once they start running like this, you might give yourself a bit more room. That's why you know, sort of probably, I, I don't like the idea of sort of you know keeping the twenty uh, a lot of the time, just giving yourself room there. Um, and if, you, if you're doing some banking along the way, there's no need to actually get push push the, the stop too tight as well because you've already you know, you've already banked you know 15 20 percent here in the first four days. It's like I'm just going to let the rest ride at break even. I think yeah, um, I'm just going to give myself plenty of room here. You know, so it takes the, just takes the pressure off the trade here. So, um, the biggest problem I'm finding with this, Chris, I, I've found it here the last couple of weeks is that. Um, I, you get a move like a big big jump in the first sort of three to five days you bank car and then you move the rest to break even and then okay let's, I'll leave that trade see what it does then you get another one that does the same and then next thing you know you've got say five stocks sitting at say 10% in your portfolio all, all backstop to break even and you are looking, you're looking for other trades so you say so you identify another four or five trades there all of a sudden you've got eight or nine positions you know, sure, I've got, got 20 positions on how do I manage? Because even other good trades, how do I manage them all? And then, because obviously the best traders don't have that many posies off, but these these ones here, one trip sort of got a little bit of the, um, little bit of fat in them. You don't know how far they can go. So it's um, yeah, I'm finding that hardest thing is just is all of a sudden I'll have more positions on if they're winning because they're um, you're letting them they're, run and they're letting them run. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it's, I don't know what to do with myself because I've sort of got. All these uh, winners there with big profits there, and I don't know how to have that many positions open at one time. So, I mean, the only thing you can do is when they, this is sort of something that because uh, I don't really like to have that many positions, I like to be more concentrated and and look there. Is it? But the, the best traders do talk about taking the worst ones off. So you're going going through looking at all your trades and go, okay, rating them. What's the yeah. setup look like on this one now? Is it performing yeah. to my playbook? No, I might have yeah. cut it. Because you might have, you know, five positions there at ten that gets 
that, that are now in a good position there, but that's taking up half the capital. Um, and then you're looking for other trades there, and then all of a sudden something like great might set up and you go, this is, there's, a, there's an A-class setup here. I'm like 95% or 90 percent invested there. I can't get to like 10 or 20 line. in there. Uh, what am I going to do? So and this is why I know it's sort of like, you know, Ryan, I mean, and you know, those other guys there, they, they might, Say so, okay, this one doesn't look as good, or I'll take five percent off here, or this one's going to be a bit vertical today. I'll take five percent off there. So they start sort of going through the trades and start maybe ranking them or something there, and then taking them off. And that's 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 not a bad thing as well. That's that's something I haven't had to do before personally. So, um, um, but yeah, good problem you know, to have. Good problem to have, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so that's interesting, but. Yeah, and then I guess the, the last thing on the chart there, Chris, is uh, this is the thing everyone loves. I, I was actually literally just talking to a client of mine actually um, about CU6 actually um, today. And I say, look, CU6 could be a good buy here because obviously it's still kept going, going on your higher today. But I said the one thing you got to realise with these leading stocks, with these momentum stocks, is you must always remember the 50-80 rule. In that eight percent of these stocks will have a eventually will have a fifty percent decline, and you know fifty or fifty percent of them will have have an eighty percent decline. So we've seen uh, like satire, and oh, what's the other one there? Um, might have even been like City City Chick was another one that was yeah. sort of had you know they both had like eighty ninety percent declines here, big declines. Um, drone shield here. What are we going to? Yeah, you know, I think I sort of said to you. Once oh, just... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna steal your thunder on this because you won't, you won't give yourself enough credit. I know you don't have to do it. Gary put a video out a couple of weeks ago where he said Drone Shield's going back to ninety cents, and that was about a day or two after it had peaked. And you have this massive candle here, and you copped a bit of flack for being so extreme. And uh, would you like to tell us what the what lower it got back to recently, Gary? Yeah, well, I, I just knew it was going to get back there because I've. I've... I learned this from like Bill McLaren. Actually, we were sort of talking about you know, oh, it's about four and a half. It's it's these extending it's trade dollars at the time. Yeah. Well, I think I sort of said satire could come back, could possibly come back to forty, fifty cents, but most likely it'll come back to at least under a dollar, which it's already under a dollar. But satire could come back all the way back down to forty cents there. But but McLaren talk about these what he called these these extending trend lines. Basically, this these blow off moves, so there's really aggressive trends. So when you get three ascending trend lines on your weeklies um, and you get these vertical trends there when they're done they'll often come back to where the last acceleration point sort of started from there so that was 90 cents on uh, on drone shield and look i've been i mean, i've been at the market for 20 years i let i built i learned build my clara stuff years ago the bill's passed away but his stuff was just gold and um but i don't think i've seen a vertical trend not come back to the last, I'm sure there's one out there, but I've never seen it. So, uh, anyone watching this, if you've got one and you can share it with us, please yeah, do. I, the other one I can think of is where they're yeah. taken out, so they've gone vertical and they're taken off the market. Yeah, I am possibly, possibly, yeah. But we just sort of know that that's that's the thing too with these leading names. That's why we're going to run. You know, I said this play. You've got to, you know, if you're going to buy that stock. It's fine, but you must run a stop on it because you know, like I know. Uh, Neil had like seven percent stops on everything. Uh, Mini Benny has like four or five percent, so the stops a bit tighter there. But you must have stops on these leading names, these um, fast moves, because when they're done, the corrections are going to be big. You're either going to be a fifty percent, which is eighty percent of the time, or you know could be something detrimental as like an eighty. You know, I mean, Coca Cola and McDonald's both had two seventy percent corrections in their time. You know, they're just Potentially, you know, leading stocks there. Amazon, probably the best, potentially the best stock on the, on the, at one stage, the best stock on the planet had a 94% correction in price. So after the 2000, so even the best stocks can go through these big corrections. That's, that's the thing about momentum stocks is like, that's why these things, I start to realize here that the, the, these sort of, um, you know, they're, these momentum names there, this gets so hyped up, so run. They keep running here. It's you know, it's they go well beyond everyone thinks there, but because you know what's going to come afterwards, you know. So um, the trick is just to stay on the stay on the train until the the tracks um, break, you know. So um, 
Because as soon as the tracks start to break, then you don't want to be anywhere near this thing. So uh, we've seen there with drain shields a big correction there. So people would have been, after it fell 20%, they were thinking, you know, the old trap of, oh, it's fallen 20%, I should, yeah, you know, it's good value now, you know. Yeah. You know, once once they tip over, they tip over, you don't, you don't want to be around here. That's, that's the um, that's, that's the key lesson, yeah. So that's drain shield, and you have thought it rightly, uh, coming back towards 90 cents, it got to 94 and a half. The next chart that comes up in this list actually became my favorite. So this is my favorite after going through and analyzing some of these charts and looking for the news. And it was because, uh, partly because how much news there was on it. And I remember going back years studying at university, how long it took the market to absorb news announcements, price sensitive news announcements. And this one really caught my eye. We've got the plus is the placement once again. So this is the legend for the chart on screen. Yep. The stars are the market sensitive price announcements, key ones. And then the flags is a sort of a structural change. So we'll run through these quite quickly. I won't go through all the details of them, but the point of going through these news announcements and so many of them is that this ended up being my favorite because it's almost like a textbook mining stock market leader. And this is kind of, I look at it as a blueprint of what we'd want to see. And I remember trading the commodity super cycle 05, 06, 07 and seeing the updates and announcements and the stellar runs echoing something you said earlier. We don't get too many, people say we don't get too many strong runs on ASX. And then another thing where you said it's always got to run 100% before it comes and sets up as a good leader. I can attest to that, starting hundreds and hundreds of companies that did those runs and over 100%. The first 100%, there's often two more runs in it at least. Anyway, digressing back to Spartan. They're the reasons why it became my favorite. Spartan Resources. Blue, they're, they're, they're cracking, Chris. You know, those little stars there, that's, that's, the, that's the drilling results, you know. Yeah. The drilling results. Good drilling. You know, bang, bang, bang. You know, so. And the cap raising, obviously, as well. The cap raising, obviously. Like, you know, when a cap raise is coming, it's going to be a bit of weakness there. Yeah. Obviously, you know, because they're always. Yeah, that's long. But the thing about cat raises too, there's always someone who takes the money off the top. Because it's not where they get placed at a discount to the point. Yeah. yeah. So someone takes their, you know, four or five cents on no. their yeah, their five percent or their three percent or however skinny they are. So there's always there's always some sellers in there who'll he'll sell it. And then, you know, but then they'll end up bragging the the stock will have that, you know, they had a classic A B C after the cat raising. So this is the thing too, the strongest names here, when they do the cat raising just wait for the little ABC correction, and maybe that's the you know that, that, then then wait for them to come in there. So um, if you do get caught <laughs> in the nice. cap thing, yeah, I, I personally think <clears throat> personally I would probably sell half. You know, post the uh, the raise, even if you know meant that you know if you, if you sold that, you would have would have been would have been down probably on your purchase maybe, um, but then it sells off for you know for a couple of weeks and then then reset on that. You know, I did something recently. I sort of got caught in a stock cap raise. So I sold half of it as soon as I found out cap raise. Um, ended up selling half of it actually probably much, just a couple of cents above my entry, which I was happy about. And then it sold off for a couple of weeks. And I thought, oh, it's come back under the the cap raise price. I thought, this is, you know, at least I'm, at least I'm getting some at the raise price. <laughs> so, and then it picked it up there. So I think it went slightly lower again, but that it's, you know, it's kind of recovered since. So, but that, that that's what can happen there. But that's I reckon that's I reckon that's great. You look at that, you know, pull back, you know, sort of uh, drilling result. You know, it's always it's always like a low hey, script reload. You want it's like a low script plan. The share price is pulled back five percent. Can you can you send us the next drilling result, please? <laughs> but that but that's that's it, right? I remember doing placements back in uh, the commodity super cycle. Blue Scott Barry, we got so many with him. And it was always the news announcements. They always wanted, you always needed fresh news to keep these uh, the drilling interest alive. And this is a textbook example of it. Not only that, but also in studying when the market absorbs news, it takes longer, of, the upshot of that is it takes longer for small capitalized companies to absorb the news. But when you really study it, you can see there's a fair bit of insider trading, especially that was happening 20 odd years ago. So this was really clean. There wasn't any evidence of leaked news, which is phenomenal to see. And this is very well managed and I loved it. And it really gave you a lot of confidence in trading the smaller cap miners. This became a larger cap throughout the process and you'll take us through that. 
to run through the history of the company. What they've got is they had Spartan Resources. The primary project was Bungalow Project in WA. That was, but they were coming out of Gascoigne Resources. That's what the company was called on the far left-hand side of the chart. And what they announced that is discussing is significant changes. They were refocusing from Gascoigne and they were shifting their focus to the high-grade gold resources, particularly their Never Never Gold Deposit. And the key point was that Melville, that and the Melville Gold Deposit were near... Uh, an existing processing plant there. I want to try to pronounce it, Dalgarana. And that was a uh, 2.5 billion ton processing plant. That was a key point. They had refocused projects that were within logistical um, proximity getting it to market. So good setup on that side. Then the news flows. So 2020, uh, 24th of May, 23, they announced their drilling results, the first one, in Never Never Gold Deposit. So May 23, just have a look at that on the chart. We've almost come down to the low. We've gone really nowhere throughout the first part of 23, and this is the first start. So the flags where they've said that's where they're refocusing. Jan, you've got quarterly cash flow and drilling update, which is the next star, and things are looking positive here. This is where we're starting to get the Never Never Gold Deposit, significant results. I won't go into all of those details. 14th of February, another drilling update. But this is all the way to 2024 now. So we've had this positive news. We've had the actual name change, which is this flag. And then this is where we really start to ramp up with the, the drilling results because we're going almost every fortnight here. 14th of Feb, 24, this is this low star. So as you said, it's almost like the share price is starting to drift off. Can we have another announcement, please? 1st of March, two weeks later, shoots up again goes through a bit of a pullback. I'm not going to go into the technicals because it's fun, but that's what you're doing here. The only other one that's been different is that they started to get included in the standard pours, all odds index. So this is not the 300 that Gary normally looks at. It goes a bit wider to the 500. The reason that's significant is that you can have institutional mandates that say, we will not hold anything outside of that universe, so don't bother trying to buy it. You get included into it, you can have a massive uplift. Gary and I looked at this a few years ago with Fisher and Bible Health. It went from, I think, the top 200 to the top 50 throughout COVID, and the uplift it received for the next week or two was just monumental. So it can have a huge price, share price impact. Running through the next stars, exactly like Gary said, update, update, update on the drilling, and that's where we're going to jump in and let Gary take over on the technical side. And his chart, uh, that's, the, that's the announcement for the uh, All Odds inclusion. We've got here just the end of 2022. We've come down to the lows. You got the possible first entry here. And this is where we've had that re the announcement where we're changing. You'll notice on this chart here, October, April, it's not a lot of the movement. That's where they've kind of had a trading pole and they've come back out with the announcement, the structural change. So where do you get your possible first entry here, Gary? You sort of got a base. You're at the bottom half of the chart. Would this have whet your appetite and had or would you have more so been looking at it and said, well, but would you enter down that part of that lower of the chart now? Yeah, that, well, that's a possible first entry there because <laughs> obviously you've got, you know, recapitalization of the stock. You're probably got it heading in a slightly different direction there. Probably going to have some probably new assets rolled in there as well. So those that are probably old holders in there might have been getting out. <laughs> And this is where new holders get in there because they get excited about what's you know, the new program, what's what's happening there. And you see that volume there as well. So this is a, probably the first time that you break up a little bit of swing high there. And you definitely see some pretty reasonable volume start to come in there, which is probably haven't seen that since the, the exhaustion of the low and everyone panicked out. So um, so that's a possible there. But you know, even, again, if, even if you just waited for this to rally up there and you started to see some reasonable volume, in that sort of, you know, July, August there. And that, that was obviously, it was interesting to talk about May there, obviously, of the, of when that all, all occurred there. But there was some good volume coming out of that. Um, but it, again, even if you just waited for the 52-week high, around, what, 35 cents or something like that, uh, as, your, as your possible entry, um, that was still, you know, still sort of been pretty reasonable there. And that, the whole thing sort of, you know, we're talking about this today, a couple of stocks there that's sort of, Couple of stocks that are just going up nice and slowly and sort of steadily, and this this just had that sort of steady sort of stream here. Um, definitely sort of hug did most of the work sort of hugging the twenty, but but really sort of probably the fifty was probably the key one there. Just sort of stayed about you know I think it only breached there a couple of times there, 
um, on that 50 initially there. Um, but, yeah, even possibly sort of buying that, uh, you know, 52-week, you know, with a, with a, with a, you know, with a 50 sort of um, as a break-even point there or maybe entry there. But, yeah, it was, it was I guess it was pretty kind of dull initially there, you might sort of say there. Um, but, um, so yeah. that's your second entry. The red line is a 50-day moving average, two possible breaches of it. But then to the right-hand side, you've got another possible entry. What is it that yeah. makes that a possible entry? Well, I mean, the good thing there, Chris, it has gone from 10 to 50 cents. So that that is a, you know, it's a 400% move. So that, that so sh- even though it's been steady rather than impulsive, it's still a big move. So it should be still on your radar because that's had a pretty big uh, move to change the character for the stock and you know, change your operation there. So it should definitely be on your radar. They, it would be definitely coming up on your report. Oh, well, it's on the 30, 30 yeah. list. I remember having to talk about yeah. the Never Never project and laughing at off at the name yeah. of it. So, yes, right on this part of the chart, it's in the 30, 30 list that we talked about yeah. on Fridays. Absolutely. But it was the ASCO in back then. Yeah. But again, it, it does sort of, you know, have a bit of a correction there. It breaks a 50. So maybe it might have had you, you know, if you trailed the 50 there, you might have got knocked out for maybe a small gain or something. Um, but then you sort of sit and wait here and you're probably waiting for a little bit of a, again, you're, Showed relative strength, so you probably you might be waiting for like a bit of a B wave break here. So it does sort of break above that, um, I think around what 47 or 48 cents there. Bit of a B wave break has a little bit of a pullback there, but stays pretty tight. Doesn't doesn't break below the last swing low, which is probably where our low should uh, our stop should be. Um, and then yeah, it just starts building there. And obviously, we start to get you know a few drilling results, as you say. Uh, and more importantly, there we're seeing actually some volume come in on those if you look at the volume there you see the volume rallied hard into the that first high and that first little that first little low there we just didn't see any any volume at all on that that first pullback there for spartan there so see how the volume dried up there um on that uh in february so basically from the, the start of february to the first you know probably to the second week of february there it pulled back but there was absolutely no selling in that, that pullback. And then it's bounced again, and we saw two big volume bars come in there. Oh, okay, this is sort of, you know, again, showing, showing strength again. The whole thing tightens up, pulls back again, no volume. Another little VCP, you know, second higher low, and then we break through there. And there's probably a little bit of a cup and handle in there as well, and the thing gaps up. So even if you just waited for the 52-week high, bought that, what, 52, 53 cents there, even just sort of coming in there, that would have still would have been, would have been a good trigger there because you sort of got a pretty strong stop, got up more than 100%, got 4%. It's had a bit of a consolidation, been pretty healthy volume, showing all the good signs we want to see. Again, we don't know what we're going to get. All, all we can look for is just those classic signs of strength, uh, relative strength, strong trends, very little selling on the pullback. But those are quite the things we're looking for. So potentially we, we could have bought some, maybe a 52-week high, we could have bought some, on this new high, and then we then we sort of see what this you know see what it brings. And just for continuity, we're going from March 2024 on the far right hand side of the chart. We're at 52 cents, pushed out a new high. Just toggle across to the next chart. So this is what we're looking at here. You've got the possible entry, the cup and handle, and then we're at 54 cents. We're breaking out new highs, and this smack bang in the middle is where we're up to. So. You've now shot out, you've had the pullbacks with low volume, possible to fit you in the entry, the cup handle with VCP, and you're possibly low. Are you running a 10-day stop, a 20-day stop? Has it given you enough indication yet as to how to run that? And then how do you move yourself into that sideways consolidation throughout April and May of 24? Yes, yeah, so it hasn't really given us any guide at all. So the 10 and the 20 haven't really worked at all. And the 50 got breached twice as well. So nothing really useful there so far on that. So... To be honest, it would probably would have been just better off trailing the last swing high. Sometimes with a, when, a, when, a, when a trend is just building slowly and steady, we just want to look at the last swing low and it hopefully gets another swing below. We buff it up to there. And, um, yeah, so so no, no real guide there at all in terms of what, what moving average would, would be best there. So you'd probably be using the 50. Um, that's sort of, all the swing lows. All the, all the swing lows would be sort of what I'd be looking at personally there. And then, and then this VCP in April and May, small VCB setup. Is it more so you're looking at the 52 week high, or you're just going for the B wave break in this early 
second week of May situation. Yes, yeah, so I guess I just noticed again that it had, had some reasonable volume in that run up. And then even when it sort of tipped over there, there might have been one sort of day of selling in there, Chris, but there wasn't any sort of follow through there. And then it bounced again. And there were some pretty big lines going through on that bounce. I thought, wow, there's some big, um, you know, big placement line getting through down there. And then the whole thing pulled back. But again, it's, it's, it tightened up again. And then, you know, I do like this one here because it sort of gave us the whole VCP really tightened up. Probably got a B wave, probably got a B wave break. You get a load sheet in there too. Actually, if you look back, probably around about 60 cents, there is a load sheet in that VCP as well. Because it did sort of pop a little bit, goes sideways for about three days and then pop through there. Yeah. So, you, you know, I, I do look for those load sheets because I, I like to cheat. Um, and uh, so you might have a little parcel there, then you might have an ad parcel on the on, on the sort of mid sheet. Then you might be buying the breakout ad in full parcel there. So, therefore, you know. That's the beauty of sort of just not entering at one place there, you know, breaking it up. Um, and you should be building a position, you know, as it's winning. You don't, you know, it, as many meaning says, you know, you're, you're, you're getting bigger as as you're winning. And then basically your smallest position, if you're losing, you should be putting in more money on, should we take money off? So um, that's the thing. You're averaging so, up, you're not averaging down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you might, I mean, it's, look, if you use the 50 there, you might have got knocked out of this. Then you might have come straight back in again when you saw a little bit of a break there. So, depending on what rules you use, it, you're just going to be consistent with what you're using. So, <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, the whole thing tightened up here. Nice BCP broke out there. You know the stock's been showing strength all along there. Hasn't shown too much um, weakness on the downside here. And then the, the, the thing starts to sort of go aggressive and then, you know, literally going up on pretty good volume, pulling back sideways, <laughs> no volume. You know, running up, big volume, going sideways, no volume, running up, volume spike again, uh, goes sideways, no volume, runs up again, big volume, goes sideways, no volume. So it's that that's what you want. So you want to see those impulsive moves and, and see them with you know, good, strong volume, and then you want to sort of see them coil there for, you know, they call for say three days or six days, just nice and tight on that sideways orientation, and then and pop again. So <clears throat> looks, you know, looks looks pretty good here. Um, yeah, stayed pretty firm. Um, this end up, you know, did break the twenty there a few times there, but didn't break it, but didn't break above the swing low. So if you just sort of trailed the last low and moved it up to the you know, next next sort of low once it moved to a new high. Um, yeah, so look, you got to got to use, you know, again, be consistent in your approach there. I, I probably would use the sort of twenty there. I might have got tipped out of some at the twenty, maybe some under under the low. I, I, again, I like breaking my orders up, but again, as soon as it broke out again, I'll probably be adding to it. So that's that's me. I'm, I really protect my capital. If it starts to break down, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out a kind of cut some, just just in case it does roll off. If it doesn't roll off and it tightens up again and it goes again, I'm happy to buy more. So this is, you know, you can really, you know, get a bit of, you know, got to be flexible as, as a trader there. You've got to be sort of be able to, you know, um, don't fall in love with the stocks. Um, what's, uh, I think, oh, I'm trying to think, you know, you don't want to, don't want to own them there. You just want to, you know, want to rent them there or something. You know, I think I, there, was, there was a great analogy recently about, you, know, you, you don't want to, yes, you know, stocks, you don't want to marry stocks. You just want to date them. <laughs> well, I think that's probably the best analogy I've heard. So, um, yeah. So it just gives. Yeah, it's obviously it looks pretty good. It obviously runs there. The last thing on the chart there is an overbalance there, Chris. That's the only thing I don't like there. And there was a few volume bars on the way down here. So when we have an overbalance like that, I know that stocks can come back. Um, like two things happen here. So either it comes up and makes a lower high. And then retreats, or it can go to a larger new high, and then retreat as well. But normally, after an overbalance, you'd at least get a period of consolidation. And so, I think to me, I look at the stock and think maybe it's getting solid. But you know, again, don't get too fixated on what it's going to do. Just let it tell you through. So, um, you know, we again, we, we don't know how, how how far these things are going to run, but we're we're waiting for those couple of handles, waiting for those VCPs. Um, using the 10 or the 20 or the 50 moving average, uh, whenever we use our stop, we might use the last one low. Just whatever we're using, just <clears throat> be, be sort of uniform. But I think if it, um, the one thing you should do is actually is study the stock that you're trading. 
So you go back and look at its its personality because each stock's got its own personality. And also try and find some stocks in your library. If you're building up a library of successful stocks, find a couple of stocks that look like this as well. Uh, maybe the same sector or things that might have had big moves. And then study them and look, look at how they behave because it does help you when you're in there trading and all and all or looking at those prior moves and studying those, you know, model books because like, all the great traders they're all they're all studying model books, they're all studying hundreds this of kind of things. But you exactly, they're studying there, so just so they know when they're in the trades, they know what's what to expect, and they don't get flinched, they don't get spooked when something you know um, happens, which was happened probably every single time before. So you've got to study these so you know exactly what they're going to do. So. It's just like trading on Tuesdays and Thursdays for match day on Saturday. Yeah. But, exactly uh, right. So this is Spartan, and we both enjoyed how the news announcement sun rolled forward to then have a rally. The next one in your list, uh, we can move through to the next one, uh, WA Warren. So I'll just get to the chart here with the news. A little bit less news, a bit more interesting in the announcements and the cycles of it. So... WA1 Resources, as the name may suggest, Western Australia. Looking forward to digging up in the ground. Uh, about 400 kilometres south of Halls Creek. That's their flagship project. Now, during their maiden drilling campaign in 2022, they discovered two mineralisation carbonates at the Lini and P2 prospects. They contained high levels of niobium, a rare earth element, or REE for the acronym. And that's really what got the market excited. They also have the Mandura project, uh, Southeast Western Australia, that's Oxide Copper Gold. And then also Hidden Valley project about 100 kilometers south of Kananara, and that's Nickel, Copper and Platinum Group Elements. As we'll see with the announcements, it's more the first one that got everyone excited. So going through, we've got 17th of October, 2022. This is the first star on the left-hand side. And it's a great little picture here that I'm going to share because it helps, picture tells a thousand words. Uh, if this will load for us, there we go. That's what's happening on, on site. Taking helicopter out, and this is their airborne electromagnetic survey underway. That's when it's announced 17th of October. This is the first star on the chart on the left-hand side. Shortly afterwards, 26th of October, they've got some results. And they discover Niobe and Rare Earth Elvis and some pretty decent uh, numbers that come in there. That shoots the share price up, and the volume profile goes insane and shoots... So we're seeing the thing uh, explode in price. And that sort of travels sideways. We've seen more than 100% rally there. And this is exactly what Gary, Gary's talking about. Fast forward. So we're going all the way to 27th of February, 23, which is just this next star. And then we're seeing that they commencement of field activities. So mobilization of earthworks equipment, which is always positive after they've done the survey. Okay, they've got uh, resources on the ground. They've got drilling rigs so they've got equipment on the ground started to progress this a little bit further and this is where we can sort of move into that spartan territory where we're getting drilling result after the drilling result but this is the first step they're getting them on the ground first of may they end up with a high grade niobium mineralization and we're going to toggle through so you can see that one as well so there's a niobium announcement in october the updates and then you just keep seeing these are the grades that are coming through this is what's exciting the market shooting the share price up once again, the 19th of October, we're getting some more updates. And uh, the, the title holders, this is the only one that was a little bit odd. There was a bit of a date mishap here. So the announcement here is the blue line when the market falls off that positive announcement. But about a week beforehand, somehow there's large volume and a large range. So that's a bit of an inconsistency, which uh, we'd see an anomaly from a Wyckoff perspective. But then we're just going to toggle through because there are so many updates that just come through date after date. And you're just seeing the dates, 26th of April, 24, 28th of March. It was just a couple of weeks beforehand. So they're the news results that are really coming through and underpinning this massive movement that we're seeing from WA1. So on the right-hand side, only got a dollar going up to 23. That's a huge movement. And the stars indicate the dates where the trades or where the announcements occurred. So with that sort of context of news coming through after the first um, finding of the announcement of the survey and then getting boots on ground and teams there, then the more updates that follow, 
How does that work out for the charts, Gary? We're starting off here with on the left-hand side, those first stars that we talked about, the announcement that we're going to have a helicopter go over site, and then the results, a big volume. It's not the first move that you, that's kind of got you excited, where they're going sort of from, well, 20-odd cents to $2.50. Very exciting. But this is exactly what you're talking about, isn't it? You're seeing an explosive 100% plus move. Then you're having a consolidation for nine months. And then it really starts getting going. So is this this what you've seen time and time again for decades and decades of studying market leaders? Yeah, it's one of the biggest sort of star tick risks. I think it goes from about twenty two and a half cents to like uh, three dollars there. So it goes up, you know, more than you know thousand percent there. You'd, you'd say so. It's a it's a pretty big, uh, yeah, pretty pretty big move there. So the thing that sort of strikes you there is um, apart from how you know at, at the time there that would have, that would have been an impulsive. Um, you know, pretty aggressive move um, and a big move, but the big, big volume through there as well. So there's your sort of first tell there, but that's, you know, a, a lot of the time if you're looking for like a 100 or, a, you know, a, I think a couple of them have been 300% moves and, they, and then they go through a contraction. This is like an 1,000% move here. So you, get, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, that might be it, you know, so... Uh, it's done, it's dusted, it's over, I'm missed done, it, dusted, I'm there with it. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, it's all it's all come out there. But you see that big volume there. That's that's enthusiastic sort of a volume there. So some stage there obviously goes through. Probably does you know probably raise some capital. I guess I imagine it into that sort of heat. Um, and then the whole thing contracts there. I mean, you go from what November through to um, April there. So um, a good sort of what six or seven months there sort of contraction. Um, and then you see the volume drop up too. Like the whole thing. You know, considering how much money had been raised there, everyone's sitting pretty patiently for the next four or five months. It was a little bit of selling at the high, um, and a few, you know, a few sellers off the high there. But then the whole volume really dries off there. There's a little bit of selling off the last time in February, but again the volume dries up. So again, the whole thing coils. A little VCP starting to set up there. You get eventually you get a little bit of a big wave break there. You get a little bit of a coil outside of the wedge, and then you can sort of break above the swing high. So um, you know, look, you're patient there. You might have been sort of coming in around 150. Certainly, would be better than paying three dollars with the with all the the retail public who got excited to see the big you know move here. So, but you know, if you if you know you're a good momentum trader there, you're not going to catch that first wave. You're just going to wait patiently for see the big jump, see the big move, big volume. Then you wait for it to sort of coil and uh, patient up there. You know it could be two to five to nine months. You don't know how long it's going to be crawling up there, but you wait for the B wave break. You wait for a swing high to be, to be taken out here, um, and then um, and then, then it starts to build here. We see a really really nice tight little um, consolidation there in April, Chris, as well. So, you know, if we got our entry around about a dollar fifty, um, it ran up to around about a dollar eighty dollar ninety. Then it did a really really tight VCP in there. And it did actually break out um, of that tight little consolidation on the daily. If you look at the daily, so it's up there. We um, did get a little bit of a break there. Uh, I think the volume was, uh, you can't sort of see it there, but the volume was actually not, was was, was stronger than the prior per, uh, periods there. You might have even got a, I'm not sure if it would have hit the pivot point, um, uh, be the strongest volume of the last 10. It might have cracked that maybe, but um but yeah, it did, did give you a little bit of a signal there. Potentially got us in another entry. But even if you did get that entry and you got the gap up and bought, bought that high there, because that would have been sort of um, gapping up prior to the uh, the February high as well, sort of taking taking that. You know, so that, that should be, you know, me personally, I like to see one swing high be broken. I like to see a second one get broken as well. So potentially could have been adding, even at $2 there, you might have been adding there. Got a bit of a... You know, two fifty and back to two, so you know, pretty wild shake out there. But uh, this move here was a real, real strong move of the first leg. So I mean, twenty five cents to um, you know to three dollars there. That's why you think okay, well, probably. Oftentimes you look at a twenty day moving average, but you know this thing's like to pull out of the gates here. So I probably should be using a ten, just because it's been really aggressive in the past. So you notice there that um, once we come out of that trigger there. We don't break the ten until until basically sort of up, up around um, fifty six dollars there. Yeah, June there up around the yeah up around just like the six dollars there. So um, 
But again, we, we know those fastest, really most aggressive moves, they'll hug the tent a lot of the time. They're, they're, you know, Calavay, you're talking about that, you know, the stocks, you know, the fastest sort of uh, most aggressive stocks are um, a hug of the tent. Um, but again, maybe you, you have half at the 10 and then half at the 20. Um, you might have sold some of the heat there. You probably would have been regretting it after a few more days later. But, um, but you know, that's, you, you do what you do. You follow your rules. Um, but this thing, you know, it's, it kept kept running here and um, it had a for dollar rise. Even if you just bought it at two dollars, if you're a bit late, um, you know, this thing is sort of still got towards six dollars there. So, you know, it would have made a three hundred percent move there. So, you keep you know, that that moves a needle on your account. Those sort of moves, Chris. Um, if you're able to sort of get on the scale, you know, trade a little bit into you know, in, into some heat there. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and then, and then it just consolidates again. And then, again, we're, what we're looking for is, you know, we don't know how long the correction is going to last, but we're looking, we should be looking for at least an A, B, C correction. And then hopefully it doesn't have too much aggressive selling in there. If there's not too much aggressive selling, and then we wait for a little bit of a B wave. And we're prepared to buy it again. We know these sort of, these leaders, they continue to keep leading. Uh, and even though they go through a bit of a contraction, we know now that they potentially can run again. So... And they've had the big move. I mean, this thing here is it, it's probably had one of the most explosive moves the first leg we've seen at any of those leading stops. So up a thousand percent in the first leg, that's that's big. So you know, a matter of days. Yeah. Like five, six days. So Yeah. So what's the uh, what's 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 the um, Jeff Bezos says, you know, you don't you know, you don't pick you know, when you're when you're on a rocket ship you don't um pick your seat, you just you just want one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's definitely the rocket ship and the most powerful explosive movement we've seen in the charts yet. So we could have thought that we'd missed it in late 22 when they had announced it and shot out of the gates. Seven month consolidation, bang, they're off again. Even a two dollar entry, we feel late, but you're taking a 300 percent return into those six dollars. It's consolidating once again, June through October, it's pulling back. You've got a little box highlighter on the right hand side and it looks like we're possibly going to have a b wave break in there we're breaking a swing high i'm guessing that's what you're running us through and i'll just toggle to the right to see if there's another chance yeah, no, it sort of matches up with the box but look at that because obviously that's that's a really impulsive move it has a little bit of a you know in terms of elliott wave there you could sort of argue you're sort of you sort of june july looks like a fourth wave and then you go to a fifth wave high and then it's all over and then so, so now you're going to go have a you learn your elliott wave after a fifth wave sort of, you know, false break there, it should go through a three-wave correction. So it does the ABC. So, your ABC. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, look, we as a trader there, we should have got knocked out there in June when it, when it crossed the 10 or the 20. So we should have been out of summit, you know, 580 and out of the rest at probably, you know, what, 550 or something there, you know. So, um, and then we sit tight. We don't know. We, we don't know how long. This could be two months, one month. Five months, seven months. We don't know how long the consolidation is going to build, but what it does here is it's it's it, after after the false break high, there's a lower high, a lower high, a lower high, another lower high. So we just wait until we see one of those lower highs gets broken, and then we maybe we, we might get a little starting position if we break a little bit of a B wave break there. So we do eventually get a little B wave break there in October. We start to come out there, and that's October twenty three. That happened to be. A bit of a lower the market as well, so this stock wouldn't have been the only stock that that would that would be pulling back in October of twenty three. Um, a lot of stocks there. So we had October October twenty two was our low. We had a few highs and stuff there. I think March was another low as well. Um, but a lot of stocks pulled back quite deep in October there. That's a pretty mild pullback compared to the rest of the market in October twenty three. So again, it's showing relative strength versus the overall market. Um, has been an old leader, so we know they can sort of settle again. So we, you know, we might get a little parcel on there. Maybe we add on the next break as well. So maybe above five fifty, five seventy, there breaks above another swing high. We might add again, uh, and then we see what see what it brings. So this, for reference, for just coming up to five seventy, crack from six dollars with the last candle on the chart. We zoom out. We know we're in twenty twenty three October, coming to November. So putting this, this is the box down here on the left-hand side of the chart, that same box. We've just come out of sort of five, coming up towards $6. It's starting to ramp up with speed. 
the volume, as you've got written here, a strong tell on breakout. So we're breaking those swing highs. You've got a couple of entries as we're jumping through the swing of eyes and possibly adding buildings to that position. Like you're saying, Minavini, as it's growing, you ought to be increasing your position. This is what you're doing, building into it. The volume's explosive. We're going from $556. This run ends up at about 11, over $11. So talk no you the day. Talk you through the, the average mindset. The, the stock's up a thousand percent in in two months. And everyone thinks so that's so it's, it's over, it's over. So then then contracts for five months and then the next rally goes from like a dollar to what six fifty. So it goes up you know, six hundred and fifty percent. And then then it goes through a contraction, everyone thinks probably it's it's definitely over. It's yeah, it's done. It's definitely done. Over. It's done. Oh, completely. It's yesterday's news. So, you know, you don't know these these letting names, you just don't know how far they can run, Chris. That's the that's the one thing. That we've learned here is there's there's strong there's the strongest stocks here the stocks showing that the, the the strongest relative strength there well, it's, it's if anything the bigger they move initially the bigger they potentially move again so this gives them moved a thousand percent so maybe six hundred and fifty percent you go oh look oh, I'll just take maybe four hundred and fifty percent the next day that'll be I'll be happy with that you know whereas the other ones when we're always looking for stocks over hundred percent so you know I just want to make a hundred percent gain you know. But uh, you know, if we see something both three hundred percent and six hundred percent, that should be telling us shit. We need to put the stock on our radar. Yeah, it's so, it's got uh, real real legs on it. It's got real ability to move. Yeah, and sort of running through this all quickly, you've got that explosive movement out of this base that you've talked us through. We've hit sort of a high. You've maybe crossed a ten day or twenty day moving average. Probably a swing low, more likely, given as you've noted before the pace at which it's traded. Well in excess of the 10-day moving average. Then you've got this next box here. It's coming to December 2023, almost New Year's 24. You've got the B-Wave break. Some solid candles down. Big red volume, big heavy volume. Getting to the 50-day, quickly reversing, bouncing, getting off it. Yeah. And down in two days. Took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days to push back through it. Are you trading that B wave break when it's taking seven days to get up? What took two days to fall? Yeah, so this so this is sort of like I mean it's, it's easy to look, look back in hindsight and say what how you should have traded, but the things you've learned from the stock but before we get to this point, we know this is a high obtained stock. So so far it's been going up more than the usual hundred current cents, but it's been going up like really aggressively. So it's hung the the ten the, the ten day moving average, we should be using that because this this thing's once it get once it goes, it's really aggressive there. So, so if we you know if we added a long back on there at say five, and then added to it at what five fifty you know six dollars there, we we know this stock is a high octane stock. We've already seen two big moves, thousand percent, six hundred percent. We're going to be using that that ten day moving average. So this this is again this is like sort of the afterpay over there. As soon as it breaks the ten day, we should be out. So it breaks the 10-day there around $10, and then it retraces all the way back down to 7 So we just wait. Again, we wait for we wait for some, some contraction there. I mean, look, maybe if you're smart enough to buy back the 50-day moving average, you might not. But I, I don't know if I, I'm, not, I'm personally not that smart. Um, I'd prefer to sort of see a little bit of a, um, oh, a break. Some sort. Yeah, I want to see a break, a lower high there. Just you know, contract again. Hopefully it contracts. And it gives you a lower high, not to you know, like ideally, like a nice little wedge is the way to go because that's then then you're sort of nice and tight there. You're not too far away. But once they get, once they this one here, the, the B waves is a little high there, but still you know still around that sort of ten dollars. So so again, I've got out at ten dollars. I've bought into the correction, and it's telling me to get back in again on the B wave break at ten dollars. I thought, oh, this is where I got out. I'm my back where it was anyway. I'll see what happens. And then this thing goes up again, and it crosses the the ten day moving average again around about thirteen dollars. It tells me to get out, you know, thirteen. So I just get out again. I make my thirty percent. The whole thing contracts again. I wait for a little bit of a congestion. I just wait for a a, a sort of um, you know um, lower high to be broken there, and then I just go with it again. So again, you know, breaks at eleven dollars. I don't know what I'm going to get here. I just hug the ten because it's, it's so far it's followed the ten. Ten's been a great one to guide me with. And it breaks the ten there around about twelve fifty. Not quite as good, you know. Not seeing these big moves there. It's like starting to get okay. Maybe this stock's, you know, maybe it's done. You know, I'm not getting the 
thousand percent or the six fifty, I'm only getting you know twenty thirty percent sort of moves here. But you know we just follow our process. It, it crosses, congests, tightens up again. Um, we know this one's been pretty loose in the past, so it hasn't really given us our tight VCP tight. So we we just take what we got. It breaks above thirteen dollars again. Again, you got out at twelve fifty. You know, it's a little bit more of a bit of a bumper there. Just buy it anyway, and then you hug the tent. So you, got, you might have got stopped out here at uh, seventeen eighteen dollars there. You might have knocked the whole thing out again, um, potentially, and and maybe you buy it back again at eighteen fifty on the break again. So even if you use the ten, which you probably should have been, because that would have been a great guide so far. Um, but again, maybe you, you know, it's like me, you might have some at ten, some at twenty, um, but um, it ends up breaking and going higher again. Then it breaks below the um, the ten again, around twenty one again. So again, just following the stock's kind of telling us what what it is. So listen to the stock, you know. That's why I sort of like, you know, looking at the personality of the stock, the size of the moves, whether you know whether that ten or the twenty or the fifty works. Work out what's best there. So like. You kind of got to learn. That's the thing about these stocks here. Learn the personality of, of each of these stocks. It'll it'll kind of be quite revealing. It'll tell you. Then look for other stocks in your library that look pretty similar, um, and, and look for that. So, but yeah, there's some good trades in there. You, you might have got stopped out a few times in there, but yeah, there's some still chunky uh, moves to be made there. You probably didn't get the big clean thousand percent or six hundred and fifty percent of there, but there was still some pretty good uh, twenty five thirty five. You know, fifty percent moves in there. So when I mean, if you're able to get out and sit out through all the chop, and then your and if your capital has gone from say you started with a two hundred k account, and then all of a sudden a year later it's at three hundred, then you're not putting on twenty thousand dollar trades. You're putting on thirty thousand dollar trades. You know, um, and then it keeps going. You know, then it goes to four hundred. Then you're putting on forty thousand dollar trades. So each time you're putting a trade on. Your trade size is getting bigger and bigger and bigger if you're, if you're betting with a percentage of your capital. So um, so those wins should just keep, you know, this is what you know, Vini and that's got doing and so cumulative returns there. So um, that's what we're all trying to do. It is. And we do know from studying some of the great traders, some of the best traders, most of them do that. We do know one or two who have actually said, you know what, for some reason I have a cognitive bias where I just can't trade an account bigger than a certain threshold of dollars. So every year, I've just got to scrape out that profit. Say it's a million dollar account, and they just can't trade over a million. It's just so everyone studies their own cognitive biases and understands. But exactly that. Ideally, we're building into it, we're building the portfolio. But uh, getting back to the leading companies, Muix is another one, but a little bit different. And we like this one from the perspective: sure, it's a great return. If those who have studied William O'Neill's work and the Ken Slim method, as well as Mark Winovini's looking at the SEPA approach, we understand that using a fundamental filter does help to find the right companies. However, in Australia, and like we've just seen with Spart and WA1, it's a harder, harder market to trade when you apply those filters because you rule out so many of the best trades that we have on our market just because they're not profitable. They're dirt diggers. So... This one's a bit more of a a company that fits that mold that we see from the US that a lot of the great traders apply all the time and a lot of the filters and scans that they apply in the sense that they do have earnings and the updates have coincided with these stars that we've got on the chart. So Newix, we'll have a look at some of those announcements just very quickly. But it's, it's their technology company and the software they create they help organizations really manage find, understand, and then manage huge amounts of data. Great in the digital age, and we can see it's been, uh, well, a market winner for the last couple of years. But we're talking about things from emails, documents, social media, all these digital sources coming together. It's hard enough for an individual to manage, let alone a business, governments, law enforcement, and also preparation for legal cases, which can be critical and the billable hours. Trawling through that data can be saved using their software. So that's the, what the company does. If we're looking at the news, we're going to the far left-hand side. We're looking at 18th of November, 2022. Remembering Gary's just talked about the market low in October. So that's what we're coming out of. We're about a month out of that low, and we're starting to see higher lows in the rest of the market, possibly moving along with it. 
they had some significant updates. And the main one was their annualized contract value, ACV, which is the main component and the main measure that they're really uh, measured by. That was showing it was down by 2.3% and revenue by 13.5%. EBITDA also fell significantly. But they made structural changes to the management. This is a key part. Management and board, including new appointments of the CEO, CFO, and other key roles. And that transformation is really what kicked off Newix, what they called Newix 2.0, and they're addressing the challenges to drive future growth. We can see the history in front of us that worked well. But that's a start here. Coming out of the market low, they've had a huge management change and shake up. That's a bit of a fun uh, structural change. They come into January 2023, which is this next star that we can see, and you've got a massive volume spike. So the first volume spikes, then the announcement changes, and we've got the first half annual results. Well, sorry, half results. And they've improved. So we've seen that the team's been successful to getting traction. Then we've got preliminary updates in 20th of July. So these sort of announcements right near each other. The key one in between these two six-month updates, which are the standard ones we'll see when we're using measures in the US, they use quarterly measures, is this massive volume spike here, this huge one with the volume bravely out getting towards $1.60. The news that coincides with that is that they successfully defend the legal proceedings brought to them by their former CFO. So pretty much at this point here, they've been able to clear the decks and just focus on what's happening forward. And I'm sure Gary will go through. There's this consolidation that we see in this period before the next news announcement. This is preliminary results, 20th of July. You can then see the next one that comes up. We've got some market updates, 20th of May, earnings updates once more. And then I'll toggle through just to the highlights. This really, this can help those who are new to CBA and new to cancelling method. The key points that exceeded their strategic target of growing statutory revenue by about 10%. Happy days. EBITDA, well, it's up more than 35% from last year. And any further change in statutory revenue will have a consequential direct impact on EBITDA given the high margin. So this is where we're looking at a similarity between the Netflix and the tech companies in the US in the sense that once they've covered their costs and they've got their growth and their R&D covered, the marginal gains that revenue or marginal to revenue really hit the bottom line quite heavily and have huge impacts. So with that context, this is a different industrial company in the sense that we're normally looking at miners, biotechs. And here we hand it over to Gary to say, okay, that's what's happened. We've had structural changes and then they've had some earnings updates. How do you trade? Yeah, you got to remember this stock, Chris. I um, can't remember what, what the IBO price. Um, can't remember what the, what the price was there, but it was... Um, I know that it got to around close to $12 in the first few months of the trading. So it might have been around $7 or $8, I think, from memory, the, the IPO. Um, but yeah, trade and tires, um, it might have been about eleven eighty five um, when it came in there. So it had a phenomenal <laughs> um, uh, decline. It's poor early. You know, so... It fell away. You know, yeah, so it had that, you know, it came on hot. And it really sort of faded there. And that, I think that was like a look there, sort of within about uh, eighteen months of its uh, of its IPO, it had, it had gone from like a peak of eleven eighty down to fifty two cents. So this thing was on its knees. So uh, pretty sure Macquarie did this one. This is one they copped a lot of grief from. I think um, which that gives good context to why there was structural change with the management, new CEO, new CFO, and why. Once they announced that they won the legal proceedings, it was positive. So that's that's also positive. that's good context indeed. Yeah, it really wasn't until sort of twenty three that it actually sort of broke out. Uh, I think that that might have been around that. I think early twenty three there that that was sort of fifty two week high there. So that was probably you know that that was probably the safe safe time to sort of be coming in there. But I, I didn't know sort of earlier that had that fifty two set low. Did sort of start to build a little bit of a, you know, a few high lows in there. That there was a bit of a, a B wave break in there. That was probably the first signs of actually some volume coming in around early twenty three, which was really in that sort of January twenty three period there. So that to me, that's probably the first time that I sort of saw some good characteristics there. Because then you sort of had your, I think you really you always had your zero one two three in there as well. Chris, a few high and lows building. Yeah, um, yeah. Then the base sort of coming out as well, but then. 
raking above that little B wave break there, um, get a bit of I get a bit impulsive there, and then you're sort of seeing the stop, you know, finally starting you know, to, to move up aggressively. Um, some good volume and then pulling back a lot volume, but then it did have a big spike there again uh, after that little tight BCP. And again, but if, if you're lucky enough to sort of trade that little little spike there, you probably would have traded some of that heat. Uh, but then it, then it went through to decline. So after that sort of February high, the whole thing just you know because it's a pretty big move there. Uh, you know, again, you get a lot of people have probably paid you know eleven, ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, <laughs> four, Pick it up. Yeah, so so you get a, you're always going to have a little bit of selling into that into that heat there. If you, you know, if you, if you do have a lot of losers in front of you, so um, so you know. Whereas it is, if this had happened earlier, it might have been a bigger bigger move there. But it does then sort of consolidate there. So what's that? You know, February through to June there. So five months sort of consolidates there, and it, the whole the whole way through here, just lower high, lower high, lower high. You know, and then you do get that. When they call that, you know, that big news that came out in July there, that's kind of game changing here for the stock. Uh, so <clears throat> that's that's sort of when the earnings really jumped as well. So that was a, that was basically the first time that um, market thought, "Whoa, the stock's suddenly got its uh, you know its house in order, and maybe this can make some money." And yeah, you know, that's sort of where the stock did jump up pretty aggressively. Uh, so it's always hard to buy a stock. I think I sort of. Yeah, you know, reading about that sort of game change of sort of news there, it's sort of it's easier to buy a stock that's up um five percent, but if it runs up more than um yeah, you know, more than five percent there makes makes it a bit hard to sort of buy that, that gap there. Um but look at the volume. The volume is you know, that that's major, you know. So I know there's a little bit of heat in there selling into that move, because obviously it's still a lot of losers there, but that's 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 a change in hands there. That's you know, people that's the amount of buying that they it's getting done there because people are viewing the company differently on that day, and then it doesn't break that, you know, doesn't break that low. So that's that's the beauty of the game changing years. That that's that's your stop for the day. I mean, I I, know, I personally sort of give myself a tiny bit more room on that game changer, but um, but it, it climbs there, gets a little bit overlappy there, does sort of come back and congest, and then goes for another VCP, and then and then sort of breaks out with a bit of a congestion pattern there. So. So again, whether you you know add some more in on the congestion, or you add some more maybe on the break, you might be waiting for a break of that one fifty five so old old high there, and you're topping up there, and then yeah, at this stage there, there's no clear sort of moving average that which sort of stood out, so you probably just want to be using the last swing low as you sort of stop there, um, tightening up there. Okay, so that's we've got the B wave break. Coming up, two dollars twenty. We're just at the start of twenty twenty four, and we're falling back two dollars twenty towards a dollar fifty. Toggle through for the next chart. This is start of twenty twenty four. We're descending from two dollars twenty down towards February low of about a dollar fifty or so, and we can see that you've mapped out here nicely for us. We've created a cuff, and then a handle to the side. I guess it would have been confusing at the time, and we probably would have been discussing to say, well. Is that the top of the cup in March that hasn't quite got to the high at the start of January 2024? Hasn't retested it completely? And are we forming a handle throughout March? And when we push through, is that a breakout that we buy? In hindsight, we can see that really it's May that's the entry. But is there any tell for you throughout that March period that, well, this is maybe a bit too volatile. It's not the right to be too loose for losers, like Al Mungie says. Would that get yeah. out of it? Or yeah. how would you trade that through March? Look, you did see some selling there off the top there, Chris. So obviously, the, yeah, this obviously this we know this stocks a lot of losers there for high. So we did see some selling on that that leg down there. So that yeah, that's a little bit negative there. But then we did we, we saw big volume on the on the on the re you know on the rebound there, and then going back up to the cup there. So it it, it almost looked like there might have been a handle there early in that yeah in that sort of setup there, but um. It just kind of meandered back up to the high. It actually even always did a little, little bit of a false break, which I often find to be, you know, in the old days, I, find, I found that quite negative. Um, but then the, it retreats there. But the thing about that handle is, look at the volume on that handle. That's that's the tell there. It's just no volume at all. So the selling just dries up in there. So, so 
first time actually that we'd actually sort of see the stock pull back. We don't see any selling at all. So the selling's very, very light there. So that that's now sort of got uh, a lot of symmetry as well. So you got a nice sort of um, big sort of you know, sort of cup there, and then you got a nice symmetrical sort of handle. There. I mean, that's that's probably that's that's as good as handle as you see there. Uh, we get again, we got a, a little ABC down to the low, and the whole thing rounds up as well. So it's symmetrical in terms of how it comes out as well. So how it trades into the low, it trades back out, and the whole thing tightens up under the. You know, it does a little David Ryan there a few days. I remember watching that sort of thing. Oh my god, that's like you know so tight. Um, so I think this is one that I actually did trade actually. So, um, but it's uh yeah, just you know just a nice little come on here. But again, it took so long there um, to sort of set up there, and then then the whole thing did take off to get going. So um, yeah, been a, been a pretty aggressive move there. Again, there, there was no history of the ten and twenty there. And, um, it probably would have been just, you know, maybe edging up, sort of using the last sort of um, uh, sort of swing lows and stuff there. Again, you had to sell some of the heat, maybe let some run there. But you, know, you just, I think you're just sort of edging up, edging up there. And, you know, you're going to get some sort of trailing point. If you don't get the history there from the from the 10 or the 20, um, you'll be using some of the, you know, again, you might mix some of it up there. Maybe you use some of the 20 and then maybe you use some, you know, use some of it back at the last was, um, swing low as well. So, but yeah, I've had a pretty good run, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is again probably done this a, a little uh, early August there, so I think stock might. Um, I've had another little B wave break here. I think I had a B wave break here on the 16th of August, um, around about that three uh, thirty three forty mark, and the stock's currently uh, got as high as probably. Yeah, it's got as high as five dollars the last couple of days. So it's, so it's had another little signal. So it's given us another, you know, little bit of break again. Chris, so that's what I mean. So like, we're getting plenty of signals there. How each person manages the process after that—that's that's the thing in question. But I think if you if you see those stronger names, wait for the congestion. Either wait for the cup in hand or wait for the VCP. Wait for the little B wave break. You know, waiting for one of those sort of setups there. Then then you're entering in there. How you enter the size and stuff, it's all up to everyone how to do it differently. But you know, this but this is what this is what the pros are doing. They're following they're following the strongest names, they're following the leaders, you know, they're waiting for, you know, little you know, looking for that sign of strength first, then a cool off, then come in on the congestion on, on the little break, and they're running with it and yeah, how they take the trades off. So, I mean, someone like a Jim Rabel, he might sit through the whole process. Yeah, you know, so he's a more of a, you know, he, he, he buys these NVIDIA names and then right, holds on them for like two or three years. He might trade some of it, but, uh, you know, he, he'll probably run a, you know, might run a, a really, really wide stop there. He might use a 50 day moving average or something like there. So he gives himself so much room on the stop there. So some, some guys are more that like the time horizons there can probably those. Um, I'm more, I, I use the daily charts or I'm, I'm likely to sort of come in and, and go out a bit more often. Trying to learn how to hold a bit longer now, but um, but uh, yeah, not not only sort of more more, quite, more daily orientated. So, but I know William O'Neill just used the weekly, um, you know, sort of set up there. So he would just t- he would just look at uh, the weekly BCPs, weekly cup and handles, and use weekly time horizons there. So you can do it do it across all, all different horizons there. But um, but yeah, I guess the only thing is you just got to come up with a process to. How you? Uh, I think the entry is kind of simple. It's how you probably exit. That's the tough part. So whether you trail it or you know um, whether you exit some or all or part of it or you know. So, um, but all we're trying to do here is trying to learn what the stronger stocks do, when to sort of set up there. No, and we've all we've done is we've sort of gone through. I mean, look, it must, you might say, oh, yeah, it's all you know. It's easier to look back here and look at what these stocks have done here. Yes, but that's that's what we're doing it because we want to learn what they look like and what we should be doing when we see the same thing occur again. So that's the point of what we're going through. We're not we're not here to say, "Hey, I did this or I should have done that," or you know, um, what we're what we're doing here is actually learning what the strongest names do, how you should trade them, and and when we see those same things occur in the future, we'll know what we should be doing with them and the process we need to sort of follow. So, um, it, you know, as I sort of said it earlier, you know, if you haven't got a plan, get one. 
So, <laughs> um, so, but you know, you got to come, you got to personalize it to you. So that's the thing about trading is some of us want to, we'll sit through, we get drawdowns. Some of us don't want to have big drawdowns. Some of us want to be active. I mean, Mini Beanie, he's, he's churning pretty quickly. He's, you know, I kind of understand why he makes these sort of 20, 22% profits pretty regularly. And you know, he's just looking to just keep his capital, you know, churning away and growing pretty quickly. So he's not trying to capture the big moves. He's just trying to just BCP after BCP, you know, trade some of the heat, take the rest off here, go again, you know, rinse, you know, repeat, rinse, repeat. So, um, you know, Jim Roper there is trying to capture the biggest names, trying to stay with them as long as he can until the trends really, you know, break and, and trip over and then, he, then he wants to sort of get out there. So he wants to be the guy who rides this thing for 200, you know, 400, 600% moves and, you know, stay long the whole time there until the market rolls over there. So, again, you just got to find who, you know, who you are, uh, what sort of suits you the most. But what, what we're sort of trying to do here is that if we, if we can learn some of the signs of what the strongest names, um, how they uh, set up, um, how they get established, what they look like when they first start. Uh, the thing you're sort of seeing here is that you're seeing some big moves there early, which you know, the, the, the average partner would say, no, it's too late. Don't come in there. Um, but that, 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 should, that should tell you that, hold on, this should be on my radar. You know, the bigger the move, the first move, um, the bigger the volume that comes in there and uh, how aggressive it is, that should be telling you, hey, this is on my radar. You know, this is gonna, this is going to go on my watch list. I'm going to watch this now. So whether you watch it for the next few weeks, the next few months, and um, we don't know if it's going to be a one month or a, or a nine month, um, but we, we we can sort of say a lot of them are in that sort of two to five month. Uh, maybe they go out to seven for us as well, but most of them are those consolidations are sort of sitting in that tight sort of tight window. It so. Um, so if we're sort of probably jumping in a little too early, uh, and we also know that we shouldn't be, uh, we should be waiting for that, you know, um, a swing high to be broken as well. It's just you can sort of see these things; they can go a long contraction out there. If you've just seen a big move and a funny pullback of you know a few weeks, you think, oh, it might be, you know, it hasn't broken something, you know, I think I'll just buy something. It could be sitting in there for another four or five months before it moves. So it might, it might consolidate, it might consolidate. That's why Mina Bini is always talking about being in the market the least amount of help. That's what he's talking about, just waiting for them to show their hand. So um, <clears throat> that's hopefully what we learned here today is sort of, again, just what we're going to see from some of the stronger names. Um, and looking forward here, if we start to see stocks that start to look a bit like these, have follow a certain formula, then, you know, then we sort of want to follow this. We, at the end of the day, when you put these trades on here, if you go back and look at these trades here, if you go back and look at the stronger names there, you just don't know what you're going to get. You see that even the stronger names, some of them only moved 20, 30% a couple of times, and you thought, oh, not big. But then 20, 15, 30, and then bang, 100. So mm. we don't know what we're going to get. That's the thing about, that's the big thing about trading is, you know, you just got to have a process to sort of try and capture that as well. That's the that's the trick. So um, it'll take some off a little bit, I think. Uh, but maybe you're just an all or nothing trader. Maybe it's going kind to of like, I'm just going to, I'm going to use a 20, I'm going to use a 10, or whatever it is. I'm just going to, and whatever I get, I get. So that, that can still work as well. You're going to capture all the big moves, and um, it may not take too much. You know, you might get stopped out a lot, um, but you are going to capture every big move if you follow that process. So you're just going to build something which is going to suit your personality um, and, and stick to it. Well, they're the great insights, and it's phenomenal that you share that with us after analyzing so many companies and so many market leaders and really break it down or hang on why is it that we're studying these market leaders so we have covered five gary has done research and ready for another couple of videos with about 10 more charts so what would you use this opportunity as a bit of a feedback you as a viewer you've watched it you've seen it through to the end which is great clearly you would have learned a lot recapped a lot and give you a lot to reflect on comment below to let us know What's been the greatest value to you? Let us know maybe what we can build more on in the next videos or what you'd like to see more of but we haven't quite covered. So let us know in the comments below. Give us a like for the video and we'll hopefully bring more of these to you. To that end, we say thank you, Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Thanks, Chris.